Hello and welcome to a very special live deep program with Carrie Smith. I'm your host, Carrie. Uh, if it's your first time here, welcome. If you're returning, I want to let you know we do have a date for our next book club. We are reading The Queering of the American Child by Logan Lansing and James Lindsay. And you have two months, almost two whole months to read it. So the book is brand new. I've read it. It's amazing. I recommend it for, especially for parents. It goes through one specific part of social justice or woke ideology. It's all about queer theory. And it traces it from the theory through the activism to the pedagogy, like in the classroom, how they put it in practice in the classroom. So we're doing it. We're doing the discussion on Thursday, May 9th. This is your announcement. Go get the book. And I hope to see you there. Okay, without further ado, I have an amazing return guest today. I haven't spoken with him on this channel in a while. I always enjoy talking with him. I told him I don't have a fancy intro today. I'm just going to call him the great and powerful as. Please welcome Hill versus Babyface. Hello. Hello, Hello well, sir. As you all know, that was just the man behind the curtain. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, that's what you were. You were in the background. You were backstage behind the curtain. in the green room yeah, yeah 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 how you doing good good to be back it's been a long time it's been too long carrie it has been too long and i have a lot of anglophiles in the chat i know who are going to be enjoying the sound of your voice as much as i am it's good to, <laughs> <laughs> good to hear from you so for anybody who's not familiar i described you though as you're one of the most popular i would say one of the most popular uh pop culture and gaming critics in the online space and you, uh, you, you had a viral moment, another, <laughs> another one. I know you had several. You had a viral moment that even made it to some of the podcasts I watch, like um, Disaffected, which is all about uh, social justice through the psychological lens. He showed a clip and I was like, oh, my worlds are colliding. You know? <laughs> so can we, can we start there? What was, sure. what was that? has that been a net positive for you that that went viral? And we'll show a clip of it. Oh, um, overall, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it was it was crazy at the time. Um, you know, I, I I do videos on pop culture, TV, film, uh, comics, whatever, and uh, just to be playing a video game. And I was speaking to um, to Kara, uh, who works at uh, Ripperverse, mm -hmm. uh, and we were talking in DMs before Starfield came out. And we, we were legitimately saying, look, I, I hope it's good. I do hope it's good. But my fear is it's going to be boring. That's my fear. It, it's going to be boring. And so when the, when the game actually came out, and I'm, I'm playing, we, we get to the character creation screen. We see the, the you can pick, pick your pronouns. He, him, she, her, they, them. Uh, it's, so I, make, I, make, I just make a comment. I'm just like, come on. You know, this is just, just, we, we know, we know what the pronouns are. Cause when you pick male or female, but she's now body type one, body type two, cause you're not allowed to say male or female anymore. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, it says yeah, yeah. that body type one, body oh, type two. Uh, in, in most video games now, you don't pick male, female. You pick body type one or body type two. Okay. Okay. Because you don't want to offend mentally ill people that will try and cancel you, destroy you, and get you to unalive yourself. Because they are perfectly reasonable. <laughs> this is what we do in 2024. Yeah, all the sarcasm so, all the time. All the time. 24-7 clown world. You gotta you gotta roll with the punches. Um, and so I made a, a Saki comment, obviously, because it's stupid. That is stupid. And uh I carry on playing the game, and it is it's a chore. Mm -hmm. It is a chore. It's just so dull and boring and everything's a loading screen and there's no... I'm trying to find some fun and I'm finding very few moments of it. And I get to about seven hours into the game and I've just saved this woman or, or done a quest for this woman and I'm going back and, and she says to me, she says, uh, oh, I need to tell you something. And I joked and I went, oh, you're a man. I just I just said that out loud. It's it, it you know this is if you see all the context around the 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 um rant. the rant, she's just like I have to tell you something. I go oh you're a man, <laughs> and then and then she says I'm a clone of a man, <laughs> and I was just like 
I've had it's enough. Like, it's like I, Sapphire's dead. It, it, it's it's like <laughs> the thing is, how surprised was I? Zero because I called it because yeah. this is where we are in in the in the stupidity of today. Now some. I've seen some people argue, well, well uh, you know, a female being a clone of a man is a sci-fi trope. It's not a sci-fi trope. Has it been used in sci-fi before? Yes, it has. Was it used in sci-fi because of this that reason? No. We know why it was used in a current day video game. Because it was so acceptable for them to do that, so safe for them to sort of do that thing and virtue signal out there. And so when I heard that, I had been through this boring slog of seven hours of the game this was actually the second stream that i did a starfield this wasn't even the first stream i think the first stream was about six hours long and i was about an hour into the second stream i'd gone away taking a break and whatever and that was it i just i just around taking the headphones off like this and i just took the headphones off and and i was so sort of like pissed off because i love my bethesda games i love my fallout i love my elder scrolls games the wonderful games because they they truly allow you to immerse yourself into a world and, and to create your own adventure because you don't have to go from point A to point B in a linear fashion to, to do what you need to do. You can go from point A and then go off at a yes a point two a point because you could just go and explore and do whatever you want, find adventures, find and they removed all of that from Starfield because you were just literally going from a loading screen on a planet to a loading screen on another planet, traveling through a loading screen. So all the connective tissue that went from the adventure that the these adventure. games normally provided was removed from the game. And so I that would was say, it. for people who don't understand or haven't played games, it's sort of like, I have played Fallout of the ones you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I loved Fallout, uh, Fallout New Vegas. And mm. it's sort of like, if you that's can not imagine... Even Bethesda. <laughs> that's not... <laughs> that was made by a third party company called Obsidian. And it, and it's actually regarded as probably the best Fallout game. It is it's amazing. It's what actually where uh I I developed I, I learned a lot of new old country that I like, the 50s country because they they have a radio thing you can play on there while you're playing. Anyway, for mm. anybody who's not a gamer, mm. imagine the books Choose Your Own Adventure. It's kind of like that but in game form. So what you're saying you're in this immersive universe and your character, you can go and do all different things. You don't have to do it in some specific order. And it, it's really like, if, if, yeah, like Choose Your Adventure is the best way I can mm. describe it. Yeah. And so this game, you're saying Starfield is just sort of point A to point B. You're just it, uh, like a rat in a maze that's just one path. Well, they, they would, they would uh, say, hey, you can go to, there are thousands of worlds that you can go to. And you're like, okay. And then they're like, but I don't need ten percent to actually have anything. <laughs> you, know, hmm? okay. you know, ninety percent of them are just your land. It's just vegetation. There might be a couple of creatures, but even getting to that planet, going to that system, whatever it is, you go to your ship. You walk into your ship, loading screen to take off. You're in space. It's a loading. You pick your planet. It's a loading screen to get to the planet. You arrive at the planet. You look for a place to land. You click the place that it's a loading screen to go down. It's it's it was just it was I was just. And then when you got there, the stuff was just crap. It just wasn't even fun anyway. It just and so I, I go on this this massive run. I'm really off about it. Uh, twenty years in the making, this IP, the first brand new IP in twenty years, and I just I just knew this. I just knew. I think that was one of the biggest frustrations because I just knew this was going to happen. My fear all along about this game was it was going to be boring. And it turned out to be incredibly boring. So I have this viral rant. Well, can I just know. I, I have. This, sorry, go on. Can I play a little bit of it here? <laughs> <laughs> There's two as's now. Yes. Is that okay? Seven. Are you done? Are you just don't want to see it anymore? Can we play just a clip? Oh, this is this. This will uh, travel with me to the, my dying day. So I'm I'm fine. Okay. I think it's I think it's righteous. I think it's a righteous <laughs> rant. And you are voicing the frustration of people with this ideology, not just in gaming, but wherever it's invaded. I mean, there's a lot of knitters who are in the chat here and it's invaded the knitting world. And so I think people can relate even if they don't if they're not a gamer. Here we go. A little something. There is nothing I love more. I'm taking my headphones off. Fuck that. Bethesda, there is nothing I love more. Than to 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 sit down, comfy chair, 
turn on my PC, fire up a brand new RPG, uh, uh, lose myself, think, oh my God, just think of this world. Just think of all the planets I can visit, all the immersive things that I can get involved with, all the fights. <laughs> All yes, the they relationships, will. all the people I meet, all the places I go. Oh, yeah, I should say, if there's little ears, there's going to be some harsh language. <laughs> there's going to be some very harsh if we could just, <laughs> actually, If you could just pause it there, though. Yeah. Because you notice that things like this, when, when, pe when, when people wanted to have their, uh, their little uh, shindigs at me, uh, notice how none of this sort of thing was mentioned. This, this stuff that I'm saying now, they just get straight to the, uh, you know, the pronouns. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't, they don't talk about how I, I set up that this is, this is how these games are created. This is what we've been dying for, you know, dying to see. We, we've had the, the uh, fantasy adventure with the Elder Scrolls. We've had the uh, post apocalyptic adventure with Fallout. Now we're getting the space adventure and it's just, you know, wow, wow. But yes, it's, it's because it's, you're, you're, the setup is you're talking about, you're getting into this immersive world. You can't wait to do this. It's your escapism, you say. And then, boom, they pull you back to current day. Well, I'll let you say it. You say it better. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to go there. And, you know, I love nothing more than with all of that laid out in front of me. I love nothing more than to be dragged out at every fucking conceivable opportunity so you can fucking current day us. Very mad, isn't he? Yeah, and he's sorry. Did you righteous. want to get immersed in our world? Yeah. Well, guess what? Fucking pronouns. <laughs> Fucking gender ambiguity. Fucking current day Californian shit. Because that's all we fucking know! Because we're boring! We're so fucking boring! I can only hear this now with Perry Chan's music. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the only way that I hear this. Because like... <laughs> I'm like, where's the beat? What happened to the beat, man? Come on. Where's the beat? But you go on and you do say, I'm just looking for just a tiny bit more because you do talk about the, immers the immersion, the escapism, mm. the entertainment. This has happened with sports too. This has happened with anything that, any pastime that humans enjoy, movies, comic books, knitting, you know. Sure. It, 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 it invades. Dungeons and Even Dragons right now. Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, as let me tell you, I have people writing me from the um, square dancing world. Okay, mm. it's, it's invaded. Uh, swing dancing, the the retro clothing community, <laughs> like anything wow. people love, yeah, was taken over by it. And and that's what somebody was asking me what you meant by current day, and mm. and what you mean is all of this current day ideology. Yes, yes, pulling yeah, you out. Yeah, and it does seem to. Current day Californian shit. It, it does seem to originate all from California, or certainly West Coast, West Coast America. Yeah. Uh, and 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 because of the you know the main big industries there, uh, comics now, uh, TV, film, you know, because they are predominantly focused Silicon Valley, because they're all predominantly focused there. That's where all, it, it's just now one big bubble, just one absolute bubble, minuscule bubble where they all believe. In what each other's saying, or at least the perception of belief of what each other's saying. However, does that actually reflect reality in the real world? No. Yeah. But they there's this this arrogance, there's this um hubris that if you don't agree with what we're saying, then you are well, as we all know, you just get called all kinds of names now: Nazi, white supremacist, racist, misogynist, simply because you you don't agree. Uh, I think we were we were better as a society 25 years ago. I think we were more progressive and, and, and more understanding as a society 25 years ago than we are today, because there was a, there was an organic um, acceptance. And some people argue that because of the organic a, a acceptance, it's led to this because tolerance is, you know, people have been so tolerant that now it's not become a, a matter of um, equality. It has become a matter of equity. Yes. And of course, equity is such an ambiguous word for them because it's a manipulative word, but they are manipulative people. So they take the word equity and they combine that with intersectionality. So you have equity plus victimhood equals give me, give me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, yeah, this that's why I say cur uh, current day California shit. It's a very specific place that this is all originating from. You don't see this in the in the East. You don't see this in Eastern Europe, never mind in the East.
so um, yeah, it, it's just everything and everywhere. There's there's no, but we've been told escapism is um, is privilege. Yes. So you you're not allowed to escape. You must be educated. Uh, uh, enter was it uh, entertain uh, edutainment? You must be uh, you must be lectured to at all times. You must have a barrage at all times of of uh, their specific set of politics. And they're not breeding tolerance, and they're not converting people. They're they're doing quite the opposite. They're breeding intolerance, and uh, they're driving more and more people away. And and we've seen the effect that uh, that trying to do this in the in the film industry has had. It's it's destroyed. It's destroyed Hollywood. Hollywood is in in ruins right now. Uh, Disney have annihilated their own company from within, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Yeah. It, I think it all needs, it's not going to stop until it, until it comes crashing down. Mm. Uh, have you heard, speaking of, you're, you're talking about escapism, they, 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 they're trying to say this is privilege. Everything they, they want to attack is privilege. Have you heard the way that they've been marketing virtual reality, like a meta on Facebook with calling it, they, Mark Anderson, one of the guys behind it, he's done lectures where he says that the majority of people don't experience reality privilege like in our real lives we don't have the way <laughs> we don't i'm serious i know it sounds funny he says you know most oppressed people don't have the uh, in reality they don't have mm. the jobs they want or the spouse they want or the body they want etc and so mm. virtual reality is going to fix this because in virtual reality you you have ultimate equity where you can create the world around you and so that's it's to overcome reality privilege they're, they're marketing um, that, that okay way. i can't wait till they go to africa and uh and go to the villages there and uh he say hey you don't need to walk 30 miles to get your clean water you just need this vr headset so you can have equity yeah you can have the virtual all the virtual water that you want i don't cut it that doesn't that doesn't cut it whatsoever virtual reality sure but you know what the world is reality not virtual and so you could you can go in there for a, a holiday you can go there and visit you can go there and have a nice little gay old time or whatever you want to do but the simple fact of the matter is this is reality and and if you want to you want to lose yourself in in those sort of uh, equitable well, what does that even mean i hear this word equity attached to so many different things did you see the thing where adderall have got the uh the 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 there is a did you Admiral? know that pain, pain Admiral, equity. Equity. yeah pain equity yeah. did you know that that, that uh, three and four black people think that the that pain is is discriminatory is that, hey what pain's racist now yeah pain's yeah. just like you know what i like those white boys <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna start attacking that black community over there i'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure they get more pain than him over there because of the melanin levels in his skin. And he's just like, if I, if I, I couldn't write satire better than they are producing in reality right now, it is, it is beyond just beyond. And, 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 uh, you know, we've had the, uh, the movie just come out, the, uh, American society of magical Negroes, which is just uh, an absolute disgusting racist pit of, of rubbish. But it can never be satirical or, or, or give the perception of being satire when you can go around and see stuff like that in reality. Or you can go around and just see the absolute lunacy that's going on. I had another viral tweet recently <laughs> where I was in my local supermarket in February. Just wanted to buy some cheese and some ribeye. That's all I wanted to buy. I got to these self-service checkouts at the end and they were covered like covered all around like huge i took a little picture you couldn't really see but it's covered i all remember around. this tweet in in pride flags i'm just like why what what's this got to do what this is this got to do with anything oh it is what it's 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 pride month in the uk no, no what what does that mean what does that actually mean well it's we're celebrating no 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 i'm here to buy food i'm here to buy food you know, this is not an organization that, that like, it's got a, hi, we're stunning brave, we're allies of the community. <laughs> no, no, 
It's got nothing to do with that. Shut up. Give me milk. Give me bread. That's what I'm there to do. If if you are there trying to push this this nonsense at checkouts, this has got nothing to do with reality. This is all corporatization of exploitation. Because they, you think somebody in corporate gives a shit? Because after February 29th, those flags went straight down for March. Yeah. Because it's 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 date mandated. It's date mandated. Um, stunning and brave. At least they come down there. I've noticed here in uh, near Austin, Texas, it's Pride twenty four seven. We have a couple different outside of the usual Pride Month. We have like a separate Pride Day, and then there's like a new Pride. I, I, there's always <laughs> something they're coining. Uh, awesome. it, it's ubiquitous because it's it's meant to shape your opinions through constant nudging. H- have you seen this? Uh, I do want to. I want to. I do want to get to Sweet Baby Ink. I want to explain sure. that. But first, I, I mm. saw this this morning, and I wanted to see what you thought of it. Um, here, let me pull this up. Do you know what Chinese torture is? Chinese torture? Yes. I don't. I just th- not the finger okay. trap thing, right? No, no, no. Chi- okay. Chinese torture is, is 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 breaking you by doing something really small, but consistent that you eventually snap. Chinese torture is dripping is dripping on your head. You drop, you put a drop. There's a constant little drip, which just goes on your head. Drip, drip, drip. Doesn't seem like a big thing. Drip, drip, drip. It dr- Eventually, it drives you mad. It drives you absolutely mad. You want to stop this constant drip on your head. This is what this is. This isn't stunning and brave. This is Chinese torture. You're not nudging people in the right direction. You're dripping on their head constantly until they go off. Yeah. And they, they, they're they not going to turn around and go, do you know what? Actually, you got me. Stunning and brave. Uh, flags are going out in front of the house. Uh, you know, our, our ally, get your, get that dude. He needs to get naked in front of my child uh, and wiggle his anus uh, uh, during June or whatever. Oh, I absolutely agree. No, no, no. That's not what happens. That's not what happens. It's not a nudge. It's a drip. It's a Chinese torture and yes. people snap. And they, yes. that's that's what breaks them. And then that's what happened. I mean, my rant wasn't something that was just there. I was seven hours into the game and that was it. I was like so mad because of the game. No, that was, that's obviously a straw that breaks the donkey's back moment. Everything that I seem to go into, I see this, I see this, I see this. Drip, 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 drip. And then I just get to a moment where this, <laughs> I need to tell you something. Oh, you're a man. I'm a clone of a man. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, that's that it. moment for me, it was so real. And it was, I mean, the reason I call it righteous is because it, it's not a manufactured, you know, it, it's in that moment of just like, <laughs> I am fed up. And I hear what you're saying. I think at some point society we're living with this delusion, okay, right now that it's become dominant. This, this, my old belief system, social justice, which, which says the best way to look at the world is, is as this competition for power among identity groups. And they have all these rules, as we're, we're going to get to in some of this. Some of the, the gaming people at these companies have been repeating the rules, saying things like, uh, it's impossible to be white, uh, racist against white people, which is a lie. <laughs> that's a delusion. That's a, that's a lie. You know who but says that? Racist people say racist that. Racist people say that. Yeah. But but you hear that enough. And for the most part, the people who are being um, singled out uh, by race, sex, sexuality, et cetera, in this ideology, the ones who are targeted, have been kind of good sports about it, I would say. <laughs> been kind of like, you know what? It's okay. Say what you want about white people. Mm. Say what you want about straight people. It's fine. We can take it. But at a certain point, I think my fear is that we'll, we will might reach a, a, a breaking point, a snapping point uh, culturally where the, something awful comes of that. That's, that's a fear that I have. If we don't put a stop to it in other ways, <laughs> that there'll be this point where people just say enough. Yeah, and... that's, the, that's the snapping point. That's the, that's the breaking point. Um, and, and it's inevitable. It's not... If it's it is a matter of when, 
Yes. You can only push people so far before they snap in general. People, I mean, this is the whole point of tolerance. Talking about tolerance earlier and how I, I believe 25 year, years ago, we're way more tolerant than we are today and way more sort of accepting and just less safe. Just let people, you know, just let people be free trade and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. But but we're getting to a point now where we are being persistently nagged, persistently nagged. And and the, the, the thing is, though, it's not like we're getting nagged in, in a way that they truly want to enact change. Uh, these are people that actually really want to enact change. And they're just like, come on, you know, we, as a society, this is the next, the next level that we need to reach to push forward as a society. No, 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 no. It's not that at all because it's, it's rooted in, in hypocrisy and greed and power struggles. Uh, and, and it's, it's just the acceptable uh, notion to be able to, to use this because this is such a sword and a shield right now you can you can hide behind racism through being a far left ideologue right now you can say oh well you can't be racist against white people that's impossible because they have all the power says the person in the position of power yes think about that one for a second there oh right no and and if you can and, and as we've seen Throughout history, when you start to um, dehumanize people, then you can do anything to them. Yes. Say anything to them. Act any way to them. We, we know what's getting mentioned in the mainstream media as regards to attacks or whatever. We, we know which ones are shown, which ones aren't shown, which ones the mainstream media news want to run with. I mean, recently we just had... Uh, and I'm not, I'm not advocating for him in any way. I'm not dissing him in any way. I'm just stating a fact here. Donald Trump was talking about the um, the car industry in America mm -hmm. and saying and saying it's going to be a bloodbath if 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 I don't get elected in, then the car industry it's going to be a bloodbath. What do the mainstream media do? They latch onto that word and oh, if Donald Trump says if he's not elected, it'll be a bloodbath. No, we just saw the context of it. We just yes. saw the context of what it talked about the car industry. And then you have, um, you know, one wonderful people that, that, uh, that record all this on the uh, internet and they just show, you know, then they just put up clip after clip, after clip, after clip of, of MSNBC, NBC, uh, CNN. It's constantly saying bloodbath, bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath, yes. bloodbath. Blood. You know, it, it's because, they know they have the power right now. They know they are the government approved. They know they're the ones who are going to get pushed. Uh, and, and they know they are exploiting their power to try and brainwash, convert, whatever you want to say. And it does work to some degree with some people. I mean, back in 2016, I was Orange Man Bad. I have, you just made me think of this. I had a conversation with someone recently who, very smart person, doesn't see eye to eye with me on some things. And we we were talking about, um, you know, agenda 2030, all these, all these plans that, that they have for us um, that include a lot of woke beliefs. And this person, I think sort of had the mentality I had during the nineties. They were sort of saying, no, this is all good. They're, you know, I, cause I was saying, I think they're just, whether you believe in climate change or not, whether you believe it's real or not, let's say it's real. Well, climate change is real. That's the history right. of planet Earth. That's the history. But let's say that it's real that we're causing a lot okay. of damage. Okay, let's say that's real. Let's say everything they say about it is real. I don't think it justifies the government measures they want to take. 9-11 was real. Didn't justify the Patriot Act. COVID was real. Didn't justify COVID response, right? And this person was saying to me as they said, okay, but the government's job, what the government's trying to do is to protect the Earth and protect humans from these evil corporations and i was like no 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 i think this is where you and i have a disconnect and maybe some mm. people can't see it maybe you're stuck in the 90s or something the government is working with the corporations the corporations are getting kickbacks if they push this stuff they're working hand in hand mm -hmm. you know with esg scores that's why you mm -hmm. see companies like advil that you mentioned that's why you see woke in in disney and all these companies it's they're hand in hand with the Gillette, government. Bud Light, all of it. Miller. Right. All of it. Right. It's it's like one, I almost, that conversation's kind of stuck in my head because I've been thinking, oh, how do, maybe that's the key. Maybe if I could get through to people and help them see like, no, the government isn't, you know, 
the soldiers shielding us from the arrows from corporations. Like they they work together. Yes, on this. it's collusion. It's the collusion between yeah. government and business, and and the government get you know. I mean, how does somebody get? I won't I won't mention a name. Don't need to. But how does somebody get into government in 2019 and be in debt or have not a lot of money at all? And then by 2024, have a net worth of over 20 something million. Because that's not what government pays. That's a good so, question. Um, so how, how do you accrue that much wealth in so little time? Hmm? Yeah. Good question. Just a, que just a question. Just a question. It I guess it pays to be a public servant as. Oh, it definitely, <laughs> it definitely does pay to be a public servant. Unfortunately, though, public servant is the official title, and uh, uh, and lobbyist is the is the other. Yeah, because uh, because that's what's uh, actually going on. Uh, the collusion between uh, business and government is is quite apparent. We saw that very recently with uh, a little uh, uh, cold that was going around. Uh, and, and we've seen how that's been pushed and pushed and pushed to push a specific product. Uh, that, uh, well, let's just say uh, only now are we allowed to uh, to really go into uh, the fact that, yeah, maybe maybe there's a few complications as regards to that. Oh, yeah, oh. the jab. Mm. Mm. Well, the media is now, I, I, should, I should say, I don't speak in codes as much as I should on my channel because fortunately... I haven't been deemed on it in a long time, so maybe I've gotten too comfortable. I, you oh, can I, stretch out here. I'm only speaking, <laughs> I'm only speaking yes. in code because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, that's the only reason why I'm using code is because I, I just have to say code, and people just say, "Oh yeah, he's talking about this. He's yeah. talking about them. He's talking about that." Because it's so obvious. Yeah, it's it's so obvious that you can you can you can play you can just like play with the verbiage and. Uh, you know, people know exactly exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um. But you know, with ESG, ESG is just a is a fancy name for uh, social credit. That's all it is. Because for, for um, corporations for corporations, yeah. Because it, it, it's is that's the S in ESG social. Uh. And and so the 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 ESG comes into the corporations. They're pushing their their social credit score, and the social credit score is for the corporation to pass on to you, though. That's 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 what it is because they got they got to stick it into their company so they can do their deals with BlackRock and Vanguard and all that sort of business. Uh, and and what do we get out of it? We get compromised entertainment. But the thing is, if you don't accept that compromised entertainment, what do you get? You're a racist. You're a bigot. You're a this. Yeah. You're a that. Oh, well, maybe you get your PayPal taken away. Maybe you get banned from YouTube. Maybe you get banned from Facebook. Maybe you get banned from Insta or 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 threads or you know you, you or your bank They've or your bank well yeah you know we've seen paypal we've seen patreon we you know we've seen banks getting involved in this it's it's you know, this is this is why uh there has to become alternatives to those uh for sure um because uh people how long is it going to be why why do we need to go to a cashless society why do why are they pushing for a cashless society uh because if you get into a cashless society they control all your money Every single thing. Because it's also what... yeah, it's all digital. This this it's no, it's not tangible. Japan yeah. are very much going to a cash. They are very much pro cash society because it, it does restrict the the power and control that government can have over the people. And so uh, it's very much a a, a coin and a note uh, country, Japan, which is exactly how it should be. The power of your money should be in your hands, not these corporations, not these banks. Uh, and it certainly shouldn't be based around uh, a social credit, but that's that's the way it's heading. Yeah, my husband has a a very uh, simple way of of protesting the the cashless places, which I respect. Which you know, like if we're at a cafe or something, and they ring us up, and then we try to pay, and they're like, "Oh, we don't take cash." He's like, "I guess I'm leaving then." Like he's just like, "I won't participate." Yeah. <laughs> like, and I I kind of respect that. Let me show you something. Since sure. we're talking about ESGs, uh, the government being involved <laughs> with corporations, I saw this this morning. I don't know if you've seen it yet. James mm. Lindsay shared this um, article. Yeah. Actually, he shared a couple of articles. 
And this one happens to be about um, uh, Harvard's nudge strategy. And it's the government <laughs> talking about shaping the behavior of 2.7 billion people in the gaming industry. And if you go to the piece, there's a couple different pieces here. Um, but this one here, let me share this instead. So the headline is green nudges for gamers. Can video games really encourage sustainable behavior? And there's several of these kind of articles, but if you go through it, the, the author is saying, wow, I realized that there's 2.7 billion people who play video games and it's a bigger entertainment market than all of music and videos combined. Yes. So how can we put our messaging in there and, you know, basically indoctrinate people with whatever the political messaging is? That's what mm -hmm. this article is. Yeah. And you see the same thing here from the UN. Look at this. Video games for climate action, winning solutions for the planet. And they're basically sort of pontificating about how to influence people by through indoctrination with their favorite entertainment. Yeah. It's, it's very apparent. I mean, uh, as somebody that games a lot, this stuff is, this thing is very apparent indeed. This is why you get a straw that breaks the donkey back moment on Starfield. Yeah. Um, when I, I was, uh, I was a big fan of the first Last of Us game. Loved it. It was a great, it was a great game in, in as much as, um, I thought it had a wonderful story. It was a, it was a, it was a great story about a, a man that during an apocalyptic event lost his daughter. His daughter was killed, and then uh, fifteen years later or so, he has an opportunity to uh, to ferry a, a, a young girl uh, uh, who's immune to this this virus which has been going around from one place to another, and uh, it starts with it, with him not wanting to build a relationship with her. Uh, he's sort of hardened. It's you know his years have gone by. He's he, and all that, and then throughout the course of their journey, they they bond and and literally become surrogate father and daughter. Uh, to the point that at the end of the game, he he will literally do anything to to save her. And uh, thematically, it's something that we can all all relate to: family, uh, loss. Um, you know, being there, support it, all you know, just wonderful themes, which is which is great for for everyone to enjoy, everyone to um, to understand at the very least. The Last of Us Part Two. Looking forward to it. Was very much looking forward to it. Where's this story going to go? Uh, how are they going to um to push it on now that uh, Joel sort of done what he did at the end of the game? Ellie's, Ellie's uh, going to be grown up a little bit. We're going to see things more from her perspective going forward. Okay, would have preferred Joel, because that's who you played in the first game for the most part. But uh, all right, maybe they got an idea. So it was like, in Naughty Dog, we trust. No, no, let's, let's thumb up this. Then you get the leaks. Now, the leaks came from within Naughty Dog. Mm. That's where they came from. And then the, the leaks came out about what the story was. Joel being literally killed off within the first couple of hours of the game. And then uh, it was going to be this, um, this, this revenge. <laughs> I could, oh my God. I, uh, to, to even try and go into, just imagine tomorrow, everything goes to shit. The whole thing goes nuts. It all kicks off. And the planet's decimated. You know, we're, we're decimated. We're down to, to small cities again. Small, broken cities. Military managed. You know, there's no real life. It's survival more than anything. You imagine that. twenty. Then imagine that 20 years in. Mm -hmm. You know, life is hard. You are struggling to eat. You're struggling to survive. You're struggling to find a, a you know, a safe place to sleep. You're, str you're struggling against just what the nightmare that's on out there. What are the themes of the Last of Us Part Two? Well, there's there's a there's a trans kid um, who uh, who who in his tribe is uh, is mad because his mum won't accept that uh, won't accept her as a him, and uh, gets his sister killed, uh, and then goes and murders his mum because she won't accept. Her is it him, and this then is in a post-apocalyptic world. Sure, <laughs> why not? <It's> the adult <laughs> post-apocalyptic, twenty years in, trans utopia. Why you're a bigot, Carrie? Come on now, get with the program. 
Okay. Uh, Ab- Abby Smash. Uh, Abby, this this sweet young girl, as you see in a, a flashback, and Joel kills her dad at the end of The Last of Us, and uh, a couple of years later, uh, suddenly she's a zipper tit uh, muscle man. Uh, and you're just like, what? Wait, who? Uh, that could go around <laughs> smashing uh, the patriarchy, I guess. Um, and, and, and it was just, it was lunacy absolute lunacy and then you have this with this woman who'd gone out for revenge killed joel and then she meets up with this trans kid who's, whose mum won't accept them and then she's like i'm actually an ally and i don't mind <laughs> and you're just like i am i am literally playing the most fucking stupid thing on planet earth right now do you and know then, what happened between those two games was it a different writer well yeah pretty much uh, um it was is Amy Hennig. Uh, I think Amy. Uh, well, I think I think Druckmann. No, I think Dr- okay. Oh, okay. I think Druckmann was for the most part involved in the writing of the first game. But I think Amy Hennig was as well. Uh, Amy Hennig was then uh, removed from the company, uh, and so Druckmann had more power. But there was a point where um, Neil Druckmann was uh, doing a presentation. And he was a, a complete disciple of Anita Sarkeesian. Oh, okay. That and so he did, he did this whole presentation uh, about how, uh, how mad and sad he was uh, to show his seven-year-old daughter, people like Lara Croft and Quiet, uh, and essentially uh, feminine women uh, that may or may not have breasts. Mm. And and how upset he was about that, and and how women really need to have penises and and uh, beards yeah, and shit. Yeah, it's only the the only people that can have can be sexy and look very feminine are men now. Men, yes, <laughs> that's really the new rules. And you know, celebrate masculinity in women, celebrate femininity in men, and never the other way. No, because it's uh, it, it's uh, it's a big old uh, bigotry sexism or some, something like that. And so he, he did this whole thing, and he, he actually mentioned Anita Sarkeesian and, and how he worshipped at the uh, the altar of feminist frequency. And uh, it wasn't just The Last of Us Part Two that this that this was already crept into Naughty Dog. Uncharted Four, it, it, Nathan Drake is getting smashed around by a woman for the whole game, and uh, it, it just doesn't. You know, as as a normal kind of person, you go, you understand this. This isn't right. What's going on here? Why? Why are you making our heroes look weak? Uh, why are you pitting them up against the, w- you know women who, in reality, because Nathan Drake's not a soft guy, kick the mm. shit out of you. You know who we would kick the shit out of, essentially. Uh, but we have these rules now where you can't have a man beat up a woman, uh, but you can have a woman beat up a man. Absolutely fine. So it works great for you know domestic abuse in current day, I guess. Uh, but it was all there. The infection was already there at Naughty Dog. It was just getting bolder and bolder. And then The Last of Us Part Two was was a colossal disaster for them. And and hailed the person that decided to put the leaks out. And of course, I had my channel, my YouTube channel was copyright struck and um, wow. claim struck by Sony and Naughty Dog. And then they... Then they sort of transferred that power into a third-party company called Misu. And the reason why I know it came from that is because I spoke to Misu and they told me, and I actually had the email to say, oh, yeah, we're working for Sony on this. To copyright strike you and, for and, criticizing yeah, yeah. it. To copyright strike to threaten your channel. Uh, because if they turn the two claims into copyright strikes, that would be three strikes. My channel would be automatically taken down. So it was it was a huge threat. But instead of backing away... And going quiet, we got even more vocal. It was myself, people like Ryan Kinnell, uh, Josiah mm-hmm. Rises. Yeah. Uh, I just know that we were we were like our our channels were copyright struck to the degree that one more and it was gone. Uh, but instead of being quiet, we we you know we got loud, we got vocal, and it got to the point where Sony just went drop drop it, drop it all, because now we're creating worse. Uh, publicity was shine, you know, the Streisand effect. Surprise, yes. surprise. Spri- uh, Streisand effect came in. We just made videos about how Sony had done this. 
Neil Druckmann denied that he knew anything about this, but then we found out details later. He did an interview, and one of the first things he said about the leaks was, oh yeah, we, we immediately were just like, how do we cut these channels down that are talking about it? How do we get rid of it? <laughs> this, is a, this is an important point, because this is what, uh, to bring it back to so-called Gamergate 2, which we're in the middle of, mm. the narrative, I'm going to try and summarize this. You tell me how if, if I get it correct or if you improve upon it. So, so when Gamergate 1, what was called Gamergate, originally sure. happened, I was thoroughly on the wrong side of this thing. I was in the woke world. I was mm -hmm. working in entertainment. I was producing a late night comedy TV show with Chris Rock. Uh, but the star of the show was a woke comedian I worked with. The whole show was woke ideology. I was in it for 20 years. This is towards the end of it. But I really... I didn't realize, we've talked about this before, I didn't realize how much of a cult it was. I didn't realize so sure. many things about it. I didn't realize it was pushing the opposite of what it said it does. That this ideology claims to be opposing racism and sexism while pushing racism and sexism. It's like, that's why I call it evil, because it takes well-intentioned people, some well-intentioned people, and it uses them to push the things they think they're fighting. Exactly. So, so when Gamergate broke, I was in that world. I remember we were working on the TV show. I think we covered it a little bit. And I just accepted what my cult told me. At that time, I would get my opinions the way a lot of cult people do. I would get it from the cult. I wouldn't engage with source material. I wouldn't mm -hmm. read articles by or watch videos by people who were not in the cult. So I would the media would tell me what to think about this. I say all this because there may be people who had the same opinion I did back then. I thought I had an opinion on things that I had never done the research to be able to have an opinion on. And one of those was Gamergate. And so I was one of those people at the time saying, oh gosh, can you believe these racist, sexist gamers and how they don't want women and people of color to play games? <laughs> I was like, really like, you know, these people are from the stone age and um, didn't know a thing about it in reality. I was watching the Anita Sarkeesian video. You know what I mean? I was sure. I, that's yeah, yeah. informing my point of view. Mm -hmm. After having left woke, long process to now be all these years later, like on from that, um, all these years later to be seeing in the media the I think it's the media that's trying to brand it Gamergate 2.0. Is that right? I don't uh, even think yeah, it's Yeah, because that... it's it's something that they believe will get them relevance again. Yes. So the media, the gaming journalists, the system, mm -hmm. they're calling it Gamergate 2.0. And yeah. it seems to me, and tell me if I'm wrong, they're playing the same game. The media, all the articles are like, I was looking for a headline to see what people were saying about this before we spoke. Mm -hmm. All the headlines are like, you know, it's basically calling gamers racist, mm -hmm. sexist, homophobic, yeah. and this this important part of what you were just talking about. They're doing a reversal, and they're saying the gamers are harassing the video game companies mm. and the video game journalists, when in fact, the video game companies and the video game journalists mm -hmm. are trying to get specific gamers and people who do commentary like yourself are trying to get them canceled and get their mm. steam channels pulled and get their yep. accounts pulled. And yep. is this, is this a correct representation of what's actually happening? Very correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. Game, game, uh, you know, uh, that term has been bounded around so many times that, and, and confused so many times <laughs> you could be absolutely, uh, completely understanding why people wouldn't know what on earth it was. What was it about? Was it about racist, sexist, misogynistic gamers? No, it was. It was. It was without naming certain names, but you can do your homework quite easily on this one. It was. It was about uh, the collusion between uh, game developers and, and gaming media. Uh, and by collusion, I mean sleeping. I, I I ended up doing my research way after the fact. Yeah. Sleeping with uh, yes. to to get to get um, f more favorable reviews, favorable scores. And I mean, if that's what you want to do for geez, something's wrong with you, but okay. Uh, but when they got called out on it, uh, then because it is the media that has the voice, the, the biggest voice because of the fact that they are the media, uh, they turned it, they turned the narrative into what they wanted to turn the narrative into, which was, oh shit, they're onto us. Let's go and, and say, oh, look at these. They don't want women. <clears throat> they don't want women in gaming, you know? 
sucking us off. They don't want women in gaming. <laughs> they want uh they just want uh their big white masculine heroes doing stuff, and we want big old soy cucks. Uh how dare they? And and so they tried to turn it into that, and and you know, Sarkeesy made a a career for a few years grifting off that. Quite a few people made a career grifting off that. And uh and, and but yeah, so so that's what they tried to turn into. This is exactly the same. This is uh people. I wasn't the first. I wasn't the first. I I I was streaming about six months ago, doing my afternoon tea with us about six months ago or so. Uh, and this was about a month after the Starfield stuff. And somebody in the chat, I can't remember who, so that's that's the only reason why I'm not saying who. I can't remember who, I'm afraid. But somebody in the chat said, Hey Az, you need to look into a company called Sweet Baby Inc. So I was like, okay. They said they got, you know, look into them because you'll be amazed what they, what's going on in the gaming industry. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. So, um, so I ended up looking into a company called Sweet Baby Inc. and found how uh, they were they were literally putting uh, <laughs> strong arming companies is the nicest way to put this. Uh, they call themselves uh, inclusion focused narrative consultancy company, uh, but they would <laughs> they would uh, strong arm companies. Uh, into diversifying and including uh, their video games, and so um, one of the one of the games that was upcoming was Alan Wake Two. I loved the first Alan Wake game. I thought it was a fantastic um, psychological horror game, and they had hinted years later uh, that there was going to be an Alan Wake Two. It, it was always sort of like it's it's probably going to come. It's probably going to come, and they would do a uh, little clips and vignettes and 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 pieces live action pieces that were really sort of like hinting that Alan Wake 2 was was coming one of them involved uh, a lady called Sarg Anderson a a, a a Scandinavian lady uh who was uh, an FBI agent and of course uh Scandinavian lady uh you'd be forgiven for thinking well blonde blue eyes Scandinavian you know and uh, well yes she was she was actually blonde blue eyes uh, and then when uh, Alan Wake 2 was uh, announced, suddenly Sarah Grandison was a stunning and brave black woman. I was going to say, did they race like, up her? Oh, uh, okay. How? How is? How, okay. Uh, why has that happened? Uh, why do? Why did we do that? Uh, we've seen Sarah Grandison. She's a blonde, blue-eyed white girl, a Scandinavian white girl. Kind of makes sense. Scandinavian roots. And so, okay, but but you know, yeah, because because you try and give the benefit. This is probably where we've gone so wrong. We've been given the benefit for yeah. so long uh, because we are organically uh, tolerant. Uh, you kind of give the benefit. And go well if the game's good and the character's good, uh, then then these things can can sort of be brushed aside. But she wasn't. The character was dog shit. Uh, the writing was absolutely abysmal on the game. And uh, both myself and Mola, who we've gone through some horrendous games in recent times. We played Gollum from start to finish. One of the worst, <laughs> worst games ever created. Even Mola and myself, neither of us could finish the game. We were done. The writing was so bad. The, the, the story was so poor. Uh, the, game, the gameplay was near non-existent. And then you find out a company like Sweet Baby Inc. is behind the narrative consultancy, inclusive narrative consultancy, whatever they want to call themselves, of that. Then you find out about the Norse mythology, God of War, Norse mythology, the race changed uh, Norse God. Why is there a black Norse God? It doesn't make Nick logical doesn't make sense. sense. doesn't make like Oh, then you discover Sweet Baby Inc. was involved with that. Then you, you go into Suicide Squad versus the Justice League. Uh, kills the Justice League, I should really say. Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. And you have these hideous Suicide Squad members. But they're meant to be the bad guys. But it's not a matter of them being the bad guys. It's the manner in which they kill off the Justice League and the absolute disrespect, disdain, disgust that they have for these heroes. I mean, they literally kill the Flash and piss on his corpse. Oh, God. Literally, one of them gets the dick out and pisses on them. Uh, the only member of the Justice League that gets a, an honorable death Surprise, surprise, is Wonder Woman, the female. Uh, as she as she has an honorable death fighting Superman, killing Superman. 
And then you see the bios that they wrote for the heroes, and they're just to Batman, toxic masculinity, this, that. And Batman at the end of the game is executed, shot in the head and executed uh, with his hands tied behind his back uh, by Harley Quinn, which is one of the worst characters in DC now because they've, they've tried to turn her into something that she isn't. And it, it, it understandably made gamers very mad to see their heroes, and particularly like Batman, and this was one of Kevin Conroy's last voice uh, acting jobs before he passed away uh, of cancer. And so to see just the disrespect that's showing, because these people don't, A, don't like and don't understand and hate your, in their eyes, patriarchal, white, masculine right. heroes. So they like to piss on them. They like to destroy them, humiliate them, uh, uh it, 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 for their own benefit who's involved in that game sweet baby ink sweet baby ink there, it's, I... it's so much for spoken the the absolute joke that the game for spoken was who's involved in that sweet baby ink i i've wanted to cut in here for a second sure. because the wet the picture that you're painting for me and how they disposed of classic heroes and in such a dishonorable way as you put it mm. It, it it strikes me as um, we just read this pretty dense book, a great book for book club called Critical Dilemma by Neil Shinvey and Pat Sawyer. I highly recommend it for anyone new who may be watching the first third of the book. They do the best job of anyone I've read yet of describing what this ideology is, social justice, woke, whatever you want to call it. They trace it. They lay it out. It's not too hard to understand. They pull a great source material to explain. And one of the things they highlight in that first third of the book is they explicitly say that the theorists who have come up with all this stuff and, you know, it trickles down from theory, from academia, trickles down to um, education and entertainment and all these other places until you hear people on TikTok saying stuff like it's impossible to be racist towards white people. You hear it. You hear this stuff. It gets filtered down and expressed in social media and expressed in video games. But one of the things they say up at the top in the in in academia in the theory they say explicitly they want to destroy all traditional norms yes uh, values mm -hmm. anything traditional they view as bad N nuclear family blah nuclear blah blah family, mm -hmm. et cetera. so yep. as you're painting this picture for me of how much they hate Batman of how much they hate these classic heroes of course they do mm. because it's all what they view as anything anything good honorable um strong traditional normal, normal. <laughs> reality itself they have to war with it they have to war with anything yeah it's very commie yeah it's very it's a very commie uh thing break down everything what you're left with reliance on government when you break everything away at, at its core entertainment education uh, social interaction, everything. When it, when everything's broken down, what what have you what have you got left? Government. Yeah, you That's destabilize all of society. You make us farm animals dependent on yeah. the government. Take wanna... everything away from you, and then uh, what? Well, you know, that's what you're left with. Uh, but you have to understand, though, sweet baby ink. Although it's being used as a as a primary example, it is one of many. Many co companies, consultancy companies that are going in there. There, are, there is a bunch of them, and they've been they've been flying under the radar now for years. And 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 some of the reasons are the original GamerGate companies wanting to course correct, mm. uh, ESG measures coming in compound that, uh, and and all it does is bring a rise to these cr uh, companies being created and people looking where they can exploit. Because it's a huge grift at the end. This is a massive oh, a grift massive at the end grift. of the day. I found another article, this one, um, speaking of, so sweet, as you said, Sweet Baby Inc.'s not the mm. only one. There's one called Black Girl Gamers, for example. Black Girl Gamers, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another, th this is from the Park Place. I just pulled this up because they're yeah, pushing. Spoken, yeah, Yeah, it's the same thing, though. They get hired to come in, and then they help develop the narrative of the game, the story of the game. And what they're doing the whole time is injecting their ideology into it. Uh, this is the Sweet Baby website. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. wanted to scroll down just a couple of buzzwords. These are cult words. Sure. These are these are all woke cult words. Anytime you see inclusion focused, they uh -huh. mean they mean exclusion. Exclusion. Um, yeah, inclusion. Yeah. Means, 
Yeah, it is. It is. It is reverse. It's Bizarro World here. Whatever they say, it's the exact reverse. Yeah. If you scroll down, I mean, even there's some cult words here. They talk about emotional design. <sighs> Anytime you see stuff like that, um, specifically, they have a section here on representation. We believe if you see representation, there's that's a buzzword right there. They basically mean. They're going to be um, on screen, like in the game, but also in the hiring practices. They're they're going to be racist, sexist. They're well, going to. That's gonna, why gonna... they'll never beat gamers. Yeah. That's why they'll never beat gamers because gamers about gameplay. That's what gamers are about. Gamers don't give a shit what color your character is, what gender your character is. Uh, what they give a shit about is is gameplay. And so if, if you want to pull these stupid words, these stupid buzzwords out, uh, include this, include that, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna fly. Uh, it isn't gonna fly. And and Justice League Kills the Suicide Squad's a prime example of that. That's a game that came from Rocksteady that created the, the Batman Arkham series, which was unbelievably amazing. The gameplay was phenomenal, and they did it in such a way that you didn't even have to have a HUD on your screen. The HUD only came on at very, very specific moments uh, to do very specific things. Otherwise, it would just fade and go, and you literally just had a whole screen of gameplay uh, because you you knew what you were doing. Then you got to the point where we get to the Suicide Squad versus uh, Kills the Justice League. The game looks like crap comparative to, to a game 10 years ago. Plus, the gameplay is crap compared to a game 10, 12 years ago. Plus, because it's it's just these consultancy companies coming in. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need... And of course, it's not just them, but the, de the designers, the programmers, the idea makers that have been at these companies 10, 12 years ago, they've gone. They've left because they're not into this shit. It's they're they're not here for that. Yeah, they're, they're, either, they're either made the money and gone, well, okay, fuck, I'm out of the industry now. Or they've gone off and they've, they've done their own startups. And they're doing their own thing. And what you're left with is, is, is people who have been brought up through this system of inclusion and diversity and, uh, and, and equity, and they're just not up to the task. They're not up it's to the task of designing. They're not up to the task of creativity. And then you've got this on their back coming in. We had Anita Sarkeesian go into Bioware to, to talk, not to, uh, I say not to consult the way that she expressed it was she was invited to go to Bioware to see how they see how they were going on with uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, the mitigated disaster that that was. And it wasn't just a disaster because of the the terrible game engine and the fact that they couldn't program it properly. It was a disaster because it was written like shit. The characters were shit. Everything about it was shit. <laughs> And and you think, oh, and who who did they invite in? Anita Sarkeesian to talk to of them. Of course. Who did they hire to do the writing? Somebody who wasn't up to the task. If you look into that, I think they were a former, potentially a former game a journal. I'm having to rack my brain from a long time ago. But like a former game journal or somebody that was completely over their head on, on narrative design and character design. Because it that that was the this is the direction that we're now going to. Battlefield five. Revisionist history. A bunch of, uh, I think it was Icelandic soldiers uh, went to take out this bridge, uh, went out to take this, all this, take out this base. And they wanted to do it and they didn't want to kill anyone. And they, and they went and did it and they did it without killing a single person. And uh, the first attempt, there was those British soldiers and all that involved and the plane crashed before they even got there and all those soldiers died. It was, it was like such an incredible, brave thing for these men to do. Battlefield 5 takes it over. What do they do? Oh, they, they change it to a mother and daughter. <laughs> a mother and daughter. That's 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 who did it. You know, fuck the brave men who put their lives on the line for this. Uh, what do they do with the Nazi flag, the, the swastika? Oh, they changed it because it, it's... it's uh, mm -hmm, mm, we can't actually have the swastika uh, representing the Nazis in the game that has Nazis. Because uh, it's uh, it, it will offend their fifi, so they changed the the flag to be a, a a different flag. Was it the? Did they make it the new pride flag? I'm kidding. Oh no, <laughs> I'm kidding. You put those two next to each other. You tell me the difference. Right, the new you one. I call I call it the narcissist flag because the one they keep adding things to it, like the circle <laughs> for autism, and the they got the triangle eating the rainbow, and yeah, oh, it's, uh, all, it's all eating itself. All right, <laughs> it is eating itself.
And then the one of the the guys at uh, at Dice called uh, gamers ignorant when they were calling all this stuff out. Ignorant. Oh, well, this is this is because these gamers are ignorant. Oh, he didn't last long at the company. He was he was uh, uh, pre-orders for the game absolutely tanked, and he was gone from the company within uh, two months after that. So one of the things there it strikes me is some of the stuff you're saying that one of the things they do is they prioritize ideology over mm -hmm. actual uh, competency. And yep. so they say what's most important is not being good at what you do in whatever field that is. What's most important is, is actually the least important things about all of us, like your race, your sex, your sexuality. But that's what's most important. If you speak the ideology surrounding identity, surrounding um, you know identity and power, then mm. we're going to put you in these positions. I've talked to people in, in TV writing who say same things happening in the writing room. They mm -hmm. will they will pass over writers' assistants rather than promote them. When there's a new spot on the panel, they'll say explicitly to their face, "Sorry, because you're a white guy, like we're going to bring in another outside writer because you don't really fit the demographics we want." And that never used to happen. If you were the writers' assistant, and you did a good job, you get a promotion when there was an opening. Now it's like we're going to skip over you four or five times because we don't have the racial makeup we want mm -hmm. yet or the gender makeup we want yet. Mm. Um, do you? I know I mentioned earlier, I think this all falls apart once everything falls apart. Uh, do you think we have to get to that place or do you think that there's enough pushback now? You've been doing this for a few years. Do you think there's enough pushback now from independent commentators and, and people outside the system and independent creators like Eric July? Do you think we stand a chance of turning culture around? Um, I mean, it's already burning down. It's it's already happening. Um. You know the the uh, the show, TV shows are not getting views, uh, movies are not getting sales. Uh, you know, people bums on seats. Uh, it is falling apart around them, but they are because they're so heavily invested. You got like Warner Brothers, fifty billion in debt, mm. and and they can still go. Oh, we're going to buy this company. We're going to buy Paramount. We're going to buy this now. We're going to merge with it. How are you even allowed to do that? Fifty billion in debt. But, but they're still producing and producing and producing because they get outside funding to make a lot of their products. Uh, that's that's how they make their uh, movies. That's how they make video. A lot of the big AAA video games, outside funding, which which you know involves involving BlackRock, Vanguard, and uh, and all that sort of business. Um, so the, it's already on the downward spiral, uh, big time. Um, people, that's one of the, another reason why video games has become so popular is because people are turning away from that entertainment because it's not entertaining anymore for them. It's not escapism uh, anymore. It's not. And, and, and a video game is somewhere that you can legitimately escape, particularly if it's a sandbox game, or open world game, a Skyrim, an Elder Scrolls, a Fallout, where you can almost create your own adventure, go where you want. Because we can't get the escapism because we can't can escape. From any of it, you 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 turn something on. Uh, we 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 see, our brains are not computing. Wait, why have you got this Eastern European medieval show that is the most inclusive and diverse play? How how can we even break down world demographics, the demography of the of the geography? How can we even do that? Because every time you go to a town, it's the same. It's a mixture of black, brown, gay, pride flags everywhere. It's just like this is this is medieval Poland. <laughs> I, kept, I, I kept joking about the, the the first season of The Witcher. I mean, I thought The Witcher series was garbage. It was unbelievably great casting of Geralt, Henry Cavill, but the show's garbage. You know, at the beginning of the, the 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 first episode, you see Henry Cavill, Geralt kill this big nasty monster. And then he goes into the town. He goes into the, the town to get his reward uh, for being a witcher and killing this monster for them. And he walks in the this pub. This this pub is it, it sort of like goes quiet when he walks in. And he and it kind of like pans around at all the clientele. Very diverse. <laughs> and you got women speaking up against the men there. And then he eventually goes to the the bartender. And the bartender sort of like What are your pronouns? Okay. Well, almost, it's sort of like, you know, it's sort of like, we look around here, Witcher, you see, we're, we're stunning and brave, and 
We also like to have women on parity with us here in this little medieval town in <laughs> Poland. If you look around, see all those black around people? Yeah, we accept everybody. <laughs> but we don't like your sore around here, Witcher. It's just like, how the <laughs> fuck does that make a modicum of sense? How on earth does that make any remote sense whatsoever? <laughs> you are, yeah, and, and, and that's, that's where we are. So you don't know where you are half the time with these shows because the the demo, the geographical the geographical demography, which is really difficult for me to say, is so inclusive and diverse. You don't know whether you're in the north, the south, the east, the west, the other side of the world, poles. Where are you? Everything is the same. Everything is stunning and brave and diverse. Everybody's body type one or body type two. Body type one, body type two. <laughs> Don't ask uh, me which. I just remembered when from the recesses of my mind that I used to love to play that I think was Bethesda uh, Bioshock. Mm -hmm. uh, Did, was Bioware. That, uh, no, Bioshock. Was that Bethesda? Bio, no, sorry. Bioshock is... Um, is it Bioware? Bioware uh, Bioshock is... Uh, not not Bethesda. Um, I loved that one. Oh, my brain's and a little bit dead. It's a little bit dead, right? I'm looking it up. Let's see. Two, is it 2K? Bioshock 2K? The uh, chat will tell us. The chat will tell us. Yeah, tell us. But that that was just, it was it immersive. Is 2K. It is 2K. Yeah, yeah. It was sort of the, just aesthetically, the feel of that game. Uh, you felt like, you, I felt like I was transported to a different world. Mm. And there was none of this. This was before this had started infiltrating gaming and, and, and just trying to imagine such a beautiful game like that now with in modern current day, as you put it. And, and just, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that game came out before this invaded everything. Um, but I do, I do think they pull away from because they're, because they're focusing on the wrong things because they're hiring based on, sex and race that that other consulting group we mentioned black girl gamers yeah. here's a post where they explicitly like a lot of woke companies they're not embarrassed to go online and say hey we're looking to hire people uh black women you know specifically mm -hmm. hit us up black women and it's, it's like that is that is sexist that is racist that's discrimination and then mm. you have stuff like this i want to hit some of these highlights tell us who this mm. lady is uh, that is a, uh, a allegedly a senior editor at Kotaku, which which means nothing to be honest with you, because I don't think a single article in Kotaku is ever edited. Uh, she probably got paid five pounds, five dollars uh, for the article that she wrote. But uh, this is the um, the Kotaku urinalist uh, <laughs> that went to bat for Sweet Baby Ink uh, when people started calling out Sweet Baby Ink and Chris Kindred who works for Sweet Baby Inc., uh, she actually uh, tried to target this, uh, this user and, uh, and get people to report them to get their Steam account banned because they did a Sweet Baby Inc. tracker using the Sweet Baby Inc. website. So it would just tell people if a game had been worked on by Sweet Baby Inc., I mean, if I was proud of my work at a, a video game company, I would be very happy with that. Oh, look, they are uh, tracking the games that we do. Excellent. Why would you get mad about that? Well, you get mad about that, of course, because you've had a light shine on you exactly what you do and uh, what your company is actually about. Uh, and that's, that's you, you want to work in the shadows. But the point is, you want to work in the shadows, but you've become so emboldened because the industry has allowed you in the door to do whatever you want that you then go to conferences and you show people exactly how racist you are. You tell people how racist you are. You tell people uh, how you want to get rid of white people from this and white people from that. You tell people openly that our job is to come in and literally say, make them black. I mean, these are these are things which the... Um, CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. has actually said, and we have on and used in videos as, as clips. And so you get somebody like Kiss Kindred who would come in and say, oh, the Steam Curator Harassment Group. It's not a harassment group. There's nothing harassing about it. They've just put a tracker showing people what games that you're involved with. 
That's not harassment. It's not harassment in any way, shape, or form. It's However, curating public information. Here are the games you work on. But it's projection because it's 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 the left. It's the far left and it's projection. We talk about inclusive actually means exclusive. Diverse actually means homogenization. Yep. Uh, you know, we, we know that these words are, are flip reverse. So when you say things like harassment, of course, you are projecting because that is exactly what you want to do. Uh, so they try to start a harassment campaign against them, which again, because Chris Kindred is clearly absolutely fucking stupid beyond belief, uh, created the Streisand effect once again and shone a light on exactly what's going on, which put more, not just more content creators, uh, eyes uh, on this, but also uh, made more people go and follow the account uh, that she was trying to harass. So it's it's all there. So yeah, the, this Chris Kendred uh, from Sweet Baby Inc. Mm -hmm. I, for anybody who's just listening and not looking on the screen, these are these are posts from from Chris Kendred just calling out this group and and trying to get it canceled, saying please go and report the f out of this group. Mm -hmm. And so the harassment ca campaign started with this Sweet Baby Inc. employee targeting random consumers and gamers who have a board saying, here's the Sweet Baby Inc. games, just be aware. And so yeah. that's how it started. Then you get the video game journalists, supposedly journalists like Alyssa Mercante from Kotaku. Kotaku and is then, a joke. It's been a joke for years. And so for anybody just listening, she says... <laughs> this is a serious post of hers. She says, uh, hi, mm. you, you can't be racist against white people. Thanks for tuning in. Mm. Which at that point, when somebody says something like that, I think it tells me their, their brain is so far gone. Like their mind is so infected mm. by this belief system that you say something that's obviously not true, that you say something that's racist itself. It's like saying, hey, just wanted you to know gravity's not real. At that point, I'm kind of like, ah, I don't know if I don't know how it is you're keeping your job. I mean, of course I do, because this has infiltrated everything. And so what up is down, down is up, and it doesn't I matter if you say something. Is now. That's all it is. It doesn't the the uh, uh, when Gamergate happened 1.0, whatever you want to call it, when the original Gamergate happened, it, it, it exposed uh the collusion between industry and, and and games journalism and and that never changed once upon a time if you went back um let's say 10 years uh before gamergate we were we were purchasing magazines even industry magazines playstation magazine made by sony edge games tm all of that kind of stuff because you would get an honest opinion on a game whether you know whether it's a good, bad, or, or game, and you weren't demonized, or, or as as a gamer, you weren't being called this, that, and the other. Once Gamergate happened, that was it. It was complete mask off for the for the media because they knew which side their bread would butter on. Uh, their bread was buttered on because they they don't serve the gamer anymore. They serve the company because the company gives them their access. Yes, and that's why we mock access media. Because access media is essentially compromised media. You are compromised. Why should we believe a single word we, you, you say when you are being taken places, taken to events, wine, dined, wine, and in dined. some cases, 69, uh, into, into giving these, these companies good thumbs up, good scores? But they took it even further. They took it even further. And instead of just doing that, they added, they added insult to injury on top of that so it, it then became insulting uh the the customer if a if a game was rejected if an idea was rejected if a character was rejected oh well you must have rejected a character due to sexism racism blah 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 i didn't see anyone reject lara croft one of the most popular female characters of all time uh perfect dark people have been desperate for a great perfect dark game for decades now mm -hmm. Because when it came out in the N64, is absolutely beloved. And the, the, I could just, you know, you could go on and on and on about examples, uh, as well as the rise of character creation games where you can create exactly who you want. Yeah. Who you want to look how you want and, and be whatever you, you, you want. Uh, but no, they, so the, the gaming industry, the gaming media was so mask off. Uh, this is why they're now destroyed. Vice, all these companies, dead. 
the dead. It's it's just pieces dropping. I got leprosy. Pieces just dropping off bit by bit until it's until it's terminal. Kotaku are going to go. Polygon are going to go. The, the the there is not much life left in these these uh, institutions, should we say, uh, mm-hmm. anymore. And the reason why they want to use the terminology of Gamergate 2.0 is because they have no traction anymore. Nobody cares what they have to say. Everyone has seen exactly who they are, what they are. They're not, they're not turning anybody's head. They're not getting any, uh, any real traction out there. They're saying Gamergate 2.0 in an effort that they can write their hate articles. Because Kotaku have admitted that they write hate bait purely because that's the only way that they can get people to click on articles now because they have no um, have talent no <laughs> talent no but they have no reputation anymore yeah they have no way to get people to come and go oh do you know what i'm going to check out this new kotaku article because that's a that's a good site that has some good insights no nobody thinks that anymore oh it's kotaku that fucking piece of dog shit they, uh, that, that they're hates gamers. They're propaganda machine, and as you said, they yeah. are embedded with the industry itself, which is fully on board with this ideology. Um, this is the that same journalist at Kotaku who said it's yeah. impossible to be racist to white people. This is her propaganda piece running mm. cover for Sweet Baby Inc. and for the ideology more broadly. And and she says, I'm not going to read it. I'm just reading uh, the subtitle is, yep. no, one company isn't forcing diversity into all your favorite video games. Correct. No, 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 we know. Correct. We know. Yeah, it's, it's lots of you. Yeah. <laughs> we know. Okay, absolutely right. We totally agree with you. It's multiple companies forcing it. But and then like it, I said, we've got the CEO of Sweet Baby and commit, admit to it. If you take a look at the mainstream, the cathedral, if you take a look at mm. the mainstream media, Play, you know Verge, nobody cares why nobody cares yeah why are they say uh <laughs> the small company they now find themselves the targets of gaming's latest harassment campaign no. you can see they all run with the propaganda you even mm-hmm. got uh the guardian in here the industry yeah. must now stand up to far-right trolls you know far right. <laughs> you, you, you can always tell when somebody gives themselves away when they try and push political ideology into the title it's yes. far right. Oh, so what you so what you're actually saying is these are far left companies that are being in your eyes attacked. Thank you for just for just confirming that you are pushing far left ideology consistently into video games. That's how you give yourself away. Yes. That's how you give yourself away. You politicized your title. You didn't you didn't go uh, and do what a journalist should. Why is this why is this company receiving uh, so much attention not attacks not harassment why is this company receiving so much attention it's this sweet baby call themselves a consultancy firm what they do what they've done is these 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 games what we've seen in these 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 games is this 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 that's journalism they don't do that no more don't do that no more now it's now it's a an ideological thing and they they clearly show you in their titles why well, you and you have think tanks like uh, Media Media Matters is on this list. You know they put out they put out the buzzwords, they put out the frame, mm-hmm. and then all of the media takes it. Now this media, the mainstream media, I, I'm going to tell you they're just as embedded as the gamer journalists that you talk yep. about. They're wind and dine with the establishment, as we already talked about in this this discussion. That's the government and corporations together. When I worked in woke entertainment we would do the same thing. We would invite, I had a whole list of journalists that I would invite to every premiere, every album release, every special event. They would come, you know, so they could rub shoulders with the celebrities there, the comedians Mm -hmm. there. And I knew, I didn't have to ask, but I knew because we shared the same ideology. We were both woke. I would invite them to my woke comedian show. They would get to see the woke show and I knew they would write a positive review. And that's how this works. Like, so all this freaking mainstream media saying the same, the same thing, they're all in bed. There's no objectivity anymore. No. Unless because you get it's outside. All, it's all seen through a political lens. Yeah. Because it's, it all boils down to intersectionality at the end of the day. Yeah. Which is victim culture. And so, so there must, when you have a, an ideology that's based around victim culture, then there must always be a victim. So whenever somebody criticizes anything, a video game, a person, a website, an article, they, they are now perceived victims. And we must run with this narrative until it's, until it's 
run into the ground. Run into the ground. So I appreciate all the time you spent with us today. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you how you maintain positivity in an upside down world. Uh, before we do that, <laughs> let me just get to, do you mind if I could thank a couple people for super? Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we might have some questions here. Uh, there've been a lot of them. Thank you guys. And thanks for being patient. I've Ian. So forth is here. Hello, sir. With 25 Lira. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> proper money right there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Ian. he says the moment as took his headphones off, I knew it was going to be an epic one. Uh, well, I, I, I'll, I'll let you into a little <laughs> secret. I knew that I was going to blow a gasket because I, I, I was so pissed off. I knew I was going to blow a gasket. And so I didn't want to blow a gasket looking like a fucking Cyberman from, Snow, <laughs> uh, from Doctor Who. Yeah. So it's just like, I'm going to take these off because if I'm going to blow a gasket, I might as well just blow a gasket normally uh, like that. Not, not, looking, not, not, not with these big old uh, chunkies on me. Exterminate. Wait, no, that's yeah. not the Cyberman. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the <laughs> Uh Artemis says this rant is how I found and sub to your channel as lovely. Thank you. A classic rant by a cool dude. This thank was you. the best rant. I loved it. Thank, uh, you. thank you for the super chat. AD Victorium for five dollars says on the bright side, at least this viral moment replaced as this crying game moment in virality. LOL. What's the crying oh. game moment? <laughs> Is that the one I was there for where you shaved your head? No, no, no. Oh. Um, uh, I was reviewing an episode oh, yeah. of She-Hulk uh, with Jane Theory. And uh, one of the beautiful things about having Jane Theory as, as a, as a co-presenter or co-reviewer on the videos is, is Jane, uh, she's an absolute angel, a sweetheart. She's one of the nicest women I, I know. And uh, it was always fun to try and shock her <laughs> by saying something. And I sort of knew the limits which I could do that and play into those limits. So, so there was a part in She-Hulk where we're talking about this bride uh, at a wedding. And I'd, I'd said this thing that I said about the bride. And then I thought, I'm just going to say a tit joke at the end uh to to, to, to kind of shock jane i just went well at least she's got a nice rack and then jane's sort of like <laughs> you know and then um turns out it was a dude oh <laughs> of course it was <laughs> yeah of, of course it was it was a dude of and then i didn't find out till till we were on fnt like later that week and chrissy chrissy was talking and she was like Oh, and then there was the bride at the because we're talking about the She-Hulk, and there was the bride at the wedding, and of course that 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 was played by uh, a trans actress, and I was like, you just see my face, and you go, <laughs> I was like, wait wait a minute, I said they had a nice rack, and then it, that's your crying game moment. It all makes my, sense now. Do 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 boo do do boo do boo. Yeah, of course they were, dude. Of course they were. Super base. Thanks for being here. Our little membership fairy is back with ten memberships. Thank you so much. And also a super chat for $5 super base says, <laughs> Joey, have you ever been in a Turkish prison? Airplane. airplane <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for translating. It's been a while since I've seen airplane. There wasn't a grown man that, could... <laughs> that, would, that can't recite it. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's such a good film. So one of the funniest films of all time. The what the one line I know from it that I recite a bit is is the uh, just don't call me Shirley line. Don't call me Shirley, yeah. yeah. Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious, and Sorry. don't call me Shirley. <laughs> just a Rone for two dollars. Woke skulls resent our ability to be happy and have fun. Yes. Yes, because they're miserable, and they want you to be as miserable as they are. They are fueled by it's a belief system fueled by resentment, and they like to take it's away victimhood. joy. Yeah, intersectionality. It's victimhood. I am a, when you when you are being told that you are always the victim, then you're always aggrieved if you're into that culture. So you always feel as if you're being slighted, cheated, don't get what you deserve. And and there's a great way to get out of it. Work. Yeah. Work. But they want to destroy everything traditional, destroy meritocracy, so nothing's based on competency, and then you're just handed things based on yes. so the companies. color of your skin yeah. or your yeah. sex, and yeah. They don't understand that if they get what they want, then that demographic 
will start to shrink further. And then it will start to shrink further and further. But they're, they're too stupid to understand this. Yeah. Dabby East for two dollars says Aloha Carry and Silverback remain blessed. Thank you very much. Super based. Again, five memberships. Thank you, Super Based. I am. And legalized adulthood gifted 20 memberships. I appreciate it, dude. He's a also, great one, is that boy? Look at him. This is so generous. Thank you for the hundred dollar super chat. That's amazing. Go carry. Great to see you and ask chatting again. Oh, you put you put two R's in carry, so you're gonna have to do another hundo to correct that legalizer. It's, oh, it's a microaggression. <laughs> 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 you dead named me. Dead named, yep, yeah. <laughs> G-Man for five dollars. Thank you, says for a bit of optimistic news. Looking forward to Shadow of the Urge. Oh, yeah, damn right. That's Is the that DLC a- for Elden Ring. Is this a good place for me to ask you? I was going to ask you, mm. what games are you excited about or th- that you think are great that have not been touched by this yet? Um, well, there's a game that's just came out uh, recently, last few weeks, called Hell Divers 2, which is uh, sort of uh, a, satirical, uh, a satirical shooter in the vein of Starship Troopers. And uh, that is just nothing but a mitigated fun and uh, it's it's become massively popular. Um, the the usual suspects are mad, of course, because they're just like, um, "Hi, just to let you know that uh, this is uh, satirical fascism." Okay, you're not the good guys, and we're just there going, "Fuck you!" We're killing for Super Earth. Everything's <laughs> for Super Earth, you know. So it's quite funny because you got the, the woke people that understand that people are loving this, and as soon as gamers love something, they're just like. How can we try and make them not love it? Uh, and, and it just doesn't work. Um, and so, yeah, you got uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree coming out, which is uh, end of June time. That is going to be the uh, the DLC for Elden Ring, which is from Software, which is a great uh, Eastern company, not Western company. So they are producing good stuff. Uh, Stellar Blade, people are looking forward to Stellar Blade. Gameplay looks good fun. And it's also got sexy ladies uh, <laughs> with sexy skimpy outfits. And so uh, that, of course, has got the uh, blue hand, uh, blue haired Portlandian land whales. Uh, absolutely <laughs> mad about that. And on Friday, Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out, uh, which has boob sliders, ass sliders, you name it. You can slide whatever you want, baby. Uh, but it looks like it's actually going to be a really, really good game. Uh, so fingers crossed for Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, because I'm I'm gonna be streaming the hell out of that on uh, Friday. Is a boob slider where you can make the boobs bigger on your camera? Yeah. Okay. Bigger or smaller. <laughs> okay, it's what it sounds like. You can like. have some <laughs> mega fun bags if you want, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like, guys. Or you can have some zipper tits. I don't know. <laughs> it's up to you. G Man for two dollars also says modern gaming makes me want to read a book. Hey. It's also in the young adult fiction. It's I've been in... doing all that. What book is that? Oh, I just it's it just reference. Uh, this is the Dark Knight Returns, by the way. Uh, seminal okay. work by Frank Miller. But it, uh, what I'm trying to say is, I've been reading a lot of comics recently. A lot of comics recently because of uh, just wanting to have fun reading. And some just fun escape. Stuff. You know, you know where I've been finding solace where there's no woke gardening. However. Like weeding, mm. weeding the garden, cathartic. However, I know I, I haven't visited any gardening forums because I know it would be there. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like I just garden by myself. I don't have to get online and talk about it. I'm doing the gym. There's no woke at the gym. I want to talk to you about that. Let me put a pen in these super chats, y'all. There's only oh, you do, you do. We can get. We can okay, do that. After. Okay. Hey. There's four left. Cassius Victus for twenty bucks. Thank you so much for the very generous super chat. It says. You will see less of SBI and the like from companies soon, but make no mistake, they are not stopping. Oh, yeah. It will just be hidden. Yes. Gamers will still have at least two years, likely closer to four plus years left to fight this fight. Yeah. One of the reasons why uh, Sweet Baby Inc. has become so prevalent now is because the games that they've been working on are now coming out. So we've not seen what yes. they've been up to because the games have been in development. Uh, but now we're seeing the the release of those uh, games and it's just shining such a light because it's so inobvious 
uh, what's been going on. Yeah. And, and there's, it's funny to me that they're, they're not in the place of hiding it because they've become so comfortable. I think because it's become so mainstream that you see, yeah. they, they just put it up right on their website, what they're doing. It's like right out in the open. But if the, I, I think you're right. This uh, Cassius, if, if it becomes viewed in a negative light, they may take it underground, but it's not, it's not going to die so quickly. No, but the, I, there will be companies. There will be some companies that, that will be like, we need to pivot away from this shit. If we're to survive, we need to pivot away from this. That, that will happen as well. And the more companies that pivot away, the better it will be for everybody. Do you see... But you, but, <laughs> well, with the Hell Divers 2, apparently, right, you, you, have, you, can wear, you wear a cloak in the game and you can change what the cloak is based on what the game gives you. Apparently, and I've been told that this is true, multiple people have confirmed this is true. Somebody <laughs> contacted the, the, the devs and they went, can we have a pride flag for the, for the uh, cape? And they went, no, <laughs> and banned them. Yes. Do you anticipate any cons narrative consulting companies coming in and de-wokifying your product? What if you started Sweet Baby Face Inc.? And hey! <laughs> I mean, it'd be, it'd be easy. I'd just be like, "See that woman? Yeah, make her tits bigger." <laughs> See that character know, gone? Well, no. Or, do you know what I could, my consultancy would be? My consultancy would be good. Take a trip to Japan. Take a trip to Japan and and go visit uh, a, a gaming studio there and just talk to them about how to actually uh, create a game for your customers. Because Japan is still doing that for the most, for the vast majority, most part. That's what they're still doing. They understand because, like I said, Japan is very, you know, for, it has, of course, it, like every country, it has its faults, but it has its its massive pros. It understands gender roles. It understands men and women. It understands a, a cash society. There's there's lots and lots of things that it understands and, and gets correct. And one of them is uh, catering to customers. But you don't want a pendulum swing in completely the opposite direction. I agree. I don't want anything that's like just in entertainment. I don't need you to preach anti woke to me either. Like just make a no. good movie or yeah, good just, game. Yeah, book. yeah. I don't. I don't need uh, gratuity above gameplay. Right. Give me gameplay above gratuity. Braz Monkey gifted five memberships. Thank you, Braz Monkey. Uh, he's, good, he's a good one. That funky monkey. Yeah, we. I'll fight you naked's here for two bucks. Says, is there a game company doing the opposite of this? That's what we just said. Yeah, I don't think so. But well, we you know the Hell Divers Two's such been so well received. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people playing it daily. Uh, it's massively popular. They just didn't have the server capacity to cope with the demand. Um, but if that isn't a clear indication that gamers just want fun games to play, and uh, I, I, I really don't know what is, it's just such an indication of that. So uh, it's big kind of like when to Top Gun the remake came out, mm -hmm. and you're like looking at the response to the Top Gun movie in theaters, it's like sort of wow, people just want a fun movie that doesn't, and with some classical, just classic themes, mm -hmm. family heroism bravery things that things that we admire in our heroes i didn't i didn't think i was i was on the train of if we don't need a top gun sequel 30 years later then i saw it as i like, yeah we kind of did actually we really kind of did those classic themes you talk about it's like uh old films or they sort of when they were imparting a message any kind of moral message it was it was more of a universal truth it was more of like um friendship celebrating friendship celebrating family like you said mm. celebrating masculinity like these healthy things in life it was something that anybody could relate to you don't have to be of a certain race or sex or sexuality it's like this is a universal human theme yes Hel helping people you know um the difference now is i think when films and games try to impart this this so-called moral message it's not a universal theme they're not talking about something that everybody can relate to like like in a Disney, the old Disney cartoons, you know, let's talk about um, rescuing your father. Let's talk about friendship, you know, um, loyalty, things like that. It's not universal themes anymore. It's it's very specific 
identity-based politics. And that's what they're te- that's what they're trying to drive into your head is like it's not something everyone can relate to. It's you have to have this specific belief. It's not a universal value rather. Does that am I yeah. saying that right? No, no, no. I I I absolutely understand because as you know, kind of looping right back to current day Californian shit, the this is what they believe in in their bubble. But the reality of the of, of the fact is outside in the real world where real people live, where where people get up at seven o'clock in the morning and they're at the job at eight o'clock and they work an eight to nine hour shift, and then they they come home and they earn not a lot of money and they just want to have some fun and they want to enjoy the company of their families, loved ones, and all that sort of stuff. They have no connection to that. None. They've lost it. Utterly lost it. And so they're just like, oh my God, everyone's so ideologically minded like we are. It's like, no, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. I work very hard for not a lot of money just to keep my family fed, keep a roof over my head, put heat into my house in the wintertime. I just want for some short moments in my life and during my week to be entertained, to escape, to get out of that. And there's a lot of people that do that. And the amount of disrespect that they show to these people is is absolutely disgraceful beyond compare because they're your customers. They forgot that it's, it's the working man and the working woman that's their bread and butter customer at the end of the day. And they're so wrapped up in their ideology and their, their pomposity and then their hubris uh, that they, they, they can't relate. They can't relate because you are not living in reality. You're living in some in la la land, some fairy ass la la land. And that's, that's, that's where, it, you know, when you latch on and you get universal themes, people are just like, yeah, we can all understand these. We can all understand friendship, camaraderie, uh, brotherhood, yeah. uh, you know, romance. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, heterosexuality you know we we can actually relate you know we can actually relate to these things uh much more than the uh the ideology that you want to push and the fake narrative that you want to push yeah i've got a couple more here from uh Braz monkey became a youtube member thank you i appreciate it and uh your average patriot nerd hello sir for five dollars says as i love the rant i'm always glad to see you on Friday Night tights hail by the way, have you ever been to a Turkish prison? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I get it. Now I can laugh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the answer is thank you and yes. <laughs> Cole Summers for $5. Thank you, says, for the rebranding of all this. That's already partnered with Campbell's We Are Bridge. It would be interesting to see Carrie review their website. Uh, I'll make a note of that. I'm not sure if you're talking about like Campbell's Soup. Campbell's Soup, maybe. We are bridge. Okay. I will look it up. I appreciate it. Man, the Advil one was just, I mean, that's just <laughs> obvious exploitation too. Of black people's like, hey, how can we sell more pills to black people? Let's tell them they have pain equity. They have pain inequity. Just completely exploitative. Fluffy Panda for $5. It's, it's, so, it's embarrassing. It is. <laughs> black people. It's so how, obvious, how you, too, like being condescended to. Let me tell you when Cracker Jack, Cracker Jack did the Cracker Jill. Did you just call me? I want to start talking about some white knitters soon. Yeah, boy. Uh, that's, that's when people are like, what did you say? <laughs> Will you just tell me? <laughs> you go Sargon of Academy right there. <laughs> Cracker Jack did... Uh, a condescending marketing for women thing, just like this this pain inequity thing for black people, and they changed the Cracker Jack packaging to Cracker Jill. Did you see this? <sighs> yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Okay. As a woman, I see that it's so revolting. It's so like you think I'm so stupid. Yes. That this is. <laughs> yes, they do. But that's. But yes, they do. I... They think you are stupid. The, it's, the, it's like I said, it's the it's the hubris, the pomposity of them. They think you are stupid. They think you are so dumb. People are like, I'm a woman. <laughs> I saw that they changed the jack to jail. I'm going buy I'm buying it. They th- that they think that is you. That is you. That is what they think. <laughs> The the brawny paper towels too. They got rid of the the sexy lumberjack. They put a lady on it because they thought 
And and on that, I think one of the knitters, Ann Pinkova, was saying, like, they don't understand their market because women were, if they're buying brawny for whoever's on the label, they're going to buy it for the sexy lumberjack, not for the mom. Like, but you're anyway. a woman and you can only relate to women. But there again, what is a woman? 2024. They, can, they, tie them, they can tie themselves in knots all day with this shit. And it is shit, bro. Gus Gus for $1.99. Thank you for the super sticker. My ex wife. <laughs> uh, is that yours? Sure. <laughs> My ex wife for $10 says. AA and indie gaming will never die. Hail the silverback. Yeah, double A. Double A gaming is double A. Uh, that's the way forward right now. What is double A? That's a company. Double double A gaming is like not your triple A. So you're not talking about your Ubisoft, your EAs, your stuff like that. You're talking about a smaller, uh, more independent that hasn't oh. been bought up by one of these companies. Uh, and they they just want to create and make money. Because that's how they survive. And so that's why you see like a big rise in stuff like Hell Divers 2, Power World, uh, a couple of double A, uh, like Power World, I think their investment in the game was somewhere in the region of uh, six to seven million dollars. They've made hundreds of millions on Power wow. World. Hundreds. Of, it's it's absolutely crazy. And, and if that isn't an incentive for a double A company to be like, this is how we make money. Is by making game for customer. There's a uh, there's a gap there. People want something. You can provide it. Yeah. Thank you for teaching me AA as a as a uh, sober person. Five years. Yeah. Uh, I immediately thought friend of Bill. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then a friend of Dorothy. <laughs> Fluffy Panda for five dollars. Love you, Carrie. Hell as. What do you think is the reason for FF7 Rebirth sales, reboot, Enviro, Woke, Fatigue, or being exclusive to PS5? Uh, it's not remotely Woke at all, so it's definitely not Woke Fatigue. Uh, reboot environment, I don't think so. I think it's got a good environment, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal brand. I think a lot of it has to do with actually the exclusivity to PlayStation 5 and the uh, additional price tag that comes with it. It's $20 more than remake final fantasy 7 remake was uh there's there's far less playstation 5s than there is playstation 4s and so you are cutting your marketplace down significantly because of that uh also i do think there is a portion of the audience that uh even though they said it's not going to come out on pc fully understand that it will come out on pc and so they're going to wait for the pc version because on the pc version they can mod it they can have 4K, they can have uh, 144 frames a second plus. Uh, they can have all the things that they can't have with the PlayStation 5 version. Uh, so they're going to be quite happy to wait uh, a year or so uh, until it comes out on, on PC, which inevitably it will. Um, but I think, I think they are the main reasons why. It's a fun game. It's a, I've had a ton of fun. If you've been watching me play that game, uh it's no they didn't they didn't cover t for up that is that is actually um uh, a a misrepresentation of what happened there is this there is a scene with a, a 16 year old tifa in like a cowboy outfit they put a a uh a black top over her uh they added like a black t-shirt on because uh it actually um continuity wise matches with i think uh alf um core, a crisis core uh, so it, that was for a continuity. On the beach, she's still in a very sexy bikini with a big bobs hanging around, <laughs> doing big bob shit. Uh, so you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna fight uh, at putting a t-shirt on a 16 year old girl. I'm okay, you know, mm. I'm okay if that brings in to continuity. But my 21 year old, 22 year old uh, Tifa uh, on the beach in a bikini, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> what system do you play on? You play on the PC? Sorry. sorry, what did you say? What do you play on? PS? Do you have a PS5 or do you, you play on a PC? Uh, well, the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is, is exclusive to the PlayStation 5. So that's oh, the only, okay. only thing that you can play that on. But I, most of my gaming, I, I do now on PC. PC Master Race, baby. So if I were to get, I haven't, like you notice a lot of the games I mentioned are old. Sure. Um, I have an Xbox 360, which is a little bit out of date. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> one of the greatest consoles ever made. It's a great console, though, right? Mm. And, and, I and the the absolute range of games that you can get for that is insane you can't get that range of games now for a console they don't give you like as many options like they make them specific to consoles now well it's it's, it's not it's not that it's, it's i'm talking about actual diversity of the game mm. the type of game uh because game companies have just become so safe now there's no sort of like experimenting with games or or uh or you just get those wonderful little RPGs or those just wonderful little uh, Silent Hills. No, it's all mm -hmm. games as a service. Got to be online. Got to find ways to monetize it after purchase. Nah, nah. And it's just annihilated gaming in, in general. Uh, so, uh, yeah. God, the amount of different games that you can get for the 360. Oh, bueno. I mean, all the ones I play are sort of... Uh, uh like uh, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, you know, mm. Dead Island, the, as I mentioned, Bioshock, the, I mean, they're pretty old. Far Cry 4, which even now, I guess, is pretty old. If I were to get a new gaming system, though, what would you suggest? I did get a Switch, so I could do the Mar Super Mario Kart stream. Yeah. But uh, what would you say, though, if I, if I like those kind of the storyline, the immersive games that you talked about. Sure. I would say the best uh, console you could get is a PC. Okay. Because the vast majority of that stuff that you said is is now available on the PC. Okay. Uh, so you can either get yourself a PC or uh, get yourself uh, a Steam Deck, which is the portable uh, version of Steam. So you can have your PC library, but play it on a handheld console with a Steam Deck. And they've just released an OLED uh, version of that, which is uh, very sexy. Thank you. That was my super chat for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just my personal selfish question. Justin Martins for ten dollars. Carrie, what do you grow in your garden? I like doing tomatoes and peppers. Nothing better than homemade salsa, containers or ground. Well, so right now I just have roses because we, uh, our house, my husband and I bought this 110 year old house and we're renovating it room by room. This is our most recent renovation. And uh, the garden is on our list for this year. We have to, um, first we have to level a whole ground, uh, which we haven't done yet because there's peaks and valleys and ditches and all kinds of stuff. But uh, since you mentioned that, we have plans for, yes, tomatoes, peppers, all kinds of herbs. Uh, we are gonna do raised beds. If anyone cares, there's there's a whole gardening YouTube. There's so many different YouTube worlds. I've been watching these channels. We're gonna do uh, construct with the chicken wire kind of thing to keep out oh, yeah, yeah, critters. Yeah. But I'm very excited, and I'm impressed that you were growing tomatoes, sir. Last time I tried it, they got eaten up by white flies. Oh. Uh, Char Charlene, 1988 for ten pounds. If I can, I would recommend a game called Substance by Cold Games independent dev and a good survival game much love to you both in the chat i love survival games i do uh, do you know that one no but i'll uh, i'll look into it i'm writing that one down thank you yeah. and last one chasso mash 64 for two dollars says sadly matt walsh is making bad takes of games yeah yeah don't go to daily wire for uh for your uh takes on games they don't he doesn't even like him doesn't care i'm glad him and jeremy sorted out their issues do i think matt walsh gave a single shit what jeremy and him spoke about in private no yeah i'm glad they sorted it out only because i do like when those behemoths like when they talk about issues like this i do like when they call attention to it um i don't think he uh, i've read the tweets where he criticizes gaming in general and why would it you know he kind of um but, well yeah but his solution to it all was don't play games at all yeah, yeah. It's a bad solution it's a bad solution <laughs> just just go and sit down and within smoking jacket you know if they were smart though because their daily wire is doing independent i mean they're doing they're trying to do movies and shows and stuff if they were it's smart they'd be doing <sighs> games no it's reactionary stuff though you know, you've got you've got Disney producing this this absolute uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs garbage. So what do they do? Oh, we're going to do a traditional Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Don't do another fairy tale. Do yeah. something different. Show how it show how a, a proper fairy tale should be done. 
you're just going tit for tat. It, it just comes across as as uh, it's just like you know, catty and 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 uh, oh, we're just going to own the woke. No, no, just if you really want to make a difference, if you really want to make a change, maybe hire a writer, create modern day fairy tale, and put it in whatever period of time that you want. May, mm -hmm. Maybe do a a a take on a, a fairy tale, but it just it just seems to be so reactionary and i don't think when you're doing that sort of reactionary stuff it it feels in any way shape or form genuine that's a great point it, it it's actually i haven't seen lady ballers yet for example but since we were talking about earlier i don't need a film that just is like the whole premise is just to be anti-woke it yes. kind of looks that way to me and i'm like okay i think i know what that film is I'm, it's not that i'm not gonna watch it i just i can wait because i know what it is well, I, I, <laughs> I feel I, like yeah I've you know? seen uh, people in my sphere, you know, in our, my sphere, my circle, my echo chamber, uh, have seen it themselves, and um, eh is what I've got from it, mm. you know. So it, it's not uh, uh, it, uh, the the biggest thing seems to be it was there was an idea, and it was just felt like a joke that got stretched out over two hours. It was. Uh, it kind of, you know, run its course very quickly. Like a Twitter joke. Yeah. Uh, which, well, which I want to for. I want to end on something positive and uplifting. Uh, in this crazy world, the great yes. and powerful as you are someone who I think <laughs> if anyone follows you online, they can see you have been on this path now for over a year. Of uh, getting a year next month. Oh, oh. Uh, there was sorry. There's different parts to it. So oh, yeah, te okay. Technically, technically over a year if you start back in December 2022. Yeah, right. So I was looking at you know your progress. You started uh, recording your progress at cutting out different different treats like energy drinks, soda yeah. pop. You know, uh, and you have at this last last update I saw you're a year 93 days. You quit energy drinks. This is a, a earlier this month. Soda mm -hmm. pop over a year, alcohol over a year. You cut out all alcohol. Amazing. Fast food over a year. Porn. That uh, what was that one? I'm just kidding. I uh, thought I would throw in a joke. About, about <laughs> three about three hours, Carrie. <laughs> Progress, <laughs> not perfection. <laughs> I thought when you said earlier how you like to, you would try to. I joke do, I do. Chain theory. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do my joke. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. Okay, so the <laughs> last one was a joke, guys. But this list is very impressive: energy drink, soda pop, alcohol, fast food. What can you talk a little bit about? What set you on this path? What it's mm -hmm. been like for you? And any words you have for people that that. It, maybe they're bogged down in this upside down world we've been talking about and they're not feeling very inspired. Like, what would you say to them? Um, well, I mean, I, I, for, for years, I mean, if you watch my videos going back, um, since I pretty much showed my face, uh, I've always been a big guy and, um, <laughs> YouTube is such a crazy, crazy world because time seems to just fly. I, I love what I do. I legitimately do love what I do. Um, it's it's the greatest job I've ever had. Uh, it's one of those jobs that if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. And that's kind of how it feels for the most part. But the vast majority of the time, I understand that I'm so lucky and fortunate and privileged uh, to do this and to have people watch, support, the whole the whole shebang what i didn't do though was look after me mm. and so uh i spent i spent i was so focused on this 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 um that uh, i got myself into a bit of a, a mindset trap where i would uh, say to myself um oh well i've done eight hours of streaming today there's no possible way that i can go make myself something to eat i'm too tired you know, I'm just like drained and drained and mentally drained and whatnot. Uh, so I'm just going to order something in. And that would become like a daily process, just a da completely daily process. And sometimes it'd be more than a daily process. It'd be like, I'm working on a video. Uh, it's, oh, it's lunchtime. I'm working on a video. I can't possibly go and make myself something to eat now uh, or do anything remotely healthy uh, whatsoever. So I'm just going to order something in for lunch. And then you'd work on the video and then, oh, it's now tea time. I've just finished my video. I need to treat myself because I've been such a good boy. I did 
or whatever it may be. And, yeah. and um, it, just, it just spiraled out of control because I got so accustomed to doing this, not just ordering in, chugging down gallons and liters of, of soda, uh, fizzy pop for us in the UK, and uh, energy drinks to keep me pepped because I wasn't getting any real sustenance or uh, exercising, really, to, to actually get myself natural endorphin releases. I had to... You know, I'm eating all this sluggish food that that just eh, ultimately, and uh, and so I'd be then going, oh well, I need to be, I need pick me up, so I need pick me up. So we hit the energy drinks to give me the pick me up to do the to do the streams to do the videos. You know, some sometimes you'd see me on stream and I'd be I'd destroy three or four energy drinks in the whole stream. You know, they'd be like the monsters, like five hundred liter monsters. Ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, and I'd just like be chucking them down. And uh, then the coup hit. Um, I, I, I started to go to the gym just before the coup hit, like the January before the coup hit. So I literally done it for like two months, coup hit. That was knocked on the head. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the coup, um, because of everything being locked down, you know, I, I just, uh, it completely went to shit. I was just ordering, not just, you know, crap, but I was ordering toys and all this kind of stuff to come in to do my shows my hot toy show ah. and this this is everywhere in the house just became a disaster zone every every everything got turned into a warehouse every room had boxes all over the place i, I had so many boxes and 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 unopened stuff and containered stuff that half my bed that i would sleep on would have containers on a front room completely covered in boxes kitchen boxes statues da 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 and uh and because you're sort of living in this this claustrophobic cramped can't hardly move environment yeah. it just it just it preys on you and preys on you so there was a like two year period where i was getting up literally just walking from a room or waddling waddling from a room into here sat down done for the day done for the day the the, the only thing i would go would be to go downstairs to pick up my food and then come back upstairs trough it down here and then uh it, it got to um it got to around about november of 20 well i mean obviously there were things before then but ultimately it came to a head around november of 2022 where i i, I sort of realized i am gonna die really soon I am I am just going to have a heart attack and, and die. This is the, I am living the most horrendously unhealthy life imaginable. I'm not exercising, I'm eating garbage, I'm absolutely ballooning in weight. Uh I I I can't go up the stairs without, you know, having a fucking asthma attack or something. You know, I, I was just absolute nightmare. And I just sort of realized if if I don't do anything, if I don't change, I'm going to drop dead. Simple as that. I'm just going to drop dead. One day I'm going to go to bed and probably ain't going to wake up. And um, I, I uh, started to... Uh, so uh, beginning of December, I think it's December the 1st, 2022, I, I said to myself, um, right, let's just go a day without energy drinks. Let's try something. Let's just go a day without energy drinks. So I go a day without energy drinks. And I'm like, okay, did I have two gallons of... Bloody pop. Yeah. Did I have takeaway? Yeah. But I didn't have an energy drink that day. I got it through that energy drink. So, so I changed. I, so I said, can we, let's do, let's see if we can make it two days. And then let's make, see if we can make it three and four. And, it, and we made it to 10. We made it to 10 days. So I said to myself, right, we've made 10 days without uh, energy drinks. Can we do soda? My, my absolute Achilles heel, soda pot. Can we do soda? Let's give it a go. So soda became day one. Energy drinks became day 11. Day 12, day two, day 13, day three, day 14, day four. And I'm just keeping track. And I was, so, so I say to myself, why don't we start posting this? If we post it, then I've got, I've got a physical accountability out there. Mm. So, so that kind of motivates me because if people say to me, hey, where's today's update? And I go, oh, that's because I had an energy. Yeah. So now, so now I'm, I'm putting myself out there to, to be a little bit more um, accountable. So 
So we get a little bit further down the line. I think it's like a month later or so. Uh, maybe I, I add alcohol. But when I go down for Christmas with my family, I'm speaking to uh, my brother-in-law, Mr. Porkchop. Um, subscribe to Mr. Porkchop under 14 on YouTube. And uh, he says, he says, look, dude, if you, if you know, need help, reach out. Reach out. So I said, oh, I am okay, I'm okay. You know, I'm nine days or whatever without pop or whatever it was. I don't know. And uh, I go back after Christmas and I say to myself, you know, everything is out of control. Everything in the house is out of control. I'm out of control and I'm looking around like, this house is out of control. So uh, I, I message him and I say, dude, you know what? I need help. I've lost control. Things are out of control. No problem. Let's arrange a time. I'm going to come up and we'll we'll start to sort some account. So Mr. Portchop comes up. I think it was February of uh, 2023. And we uh we start uh sorting bits of the house out. We clean we get the kitchen sorted when he comes up. I say we 99% him, 1% me, because I'm just not functioning as a human physically. Mm -hmm. Still, you know. I'm, I'm dropping off a couple of things, but I'm not functioning as a human. I can't do shit. Can't lift shit. Can't walk shit. Can't do shit. And your normal crutches that your brain is programmed to like go to, you're not you're not indulging in them. Yeah. You know, so yeah. To, whatever it is. Yeah. My my brain my brain can't I can't physically shift around much. My brain's just like, where's my shit, dude? Where's you know? Where's my pot? Where's my energy drinks? Can't have that. But we're still having the. Uh, Still having the uh, takeaways, still eating, but you know, pretty badly. But I'm cutting things out bit by bit. So we we st he, and he starts coming up periodically throughout the year, and we, we start sorting the house out. And we sort we sort the house out. We get I get a storage unit. We move all the stuff over to the storage unit. We get the house sorted out. Uh, tickety boo. But I, so I say to myself, right, I've got the house looking like a house again. I, I've got a functional home got rid of a bunch of shit, skipped it, got rid, get some new stuff in, brand new bed, brand new uh, drawers, modular cases for some of this stuff. That, you know, really like new start sort of thing. And uh, it comes to the point where I say, I, I got to make, uh, I got to tackle the food now. That's, that's such a, because uh, most of, of your weight is going to be diet. And yeah, pop, brilliant. Energy drinks, brilliant but if you don't sort the food out you're not going to go anywhere really so i wasn't re i was reducing a nano bit but not much mm -hmm. so we're like right we're not ordering anything in anymore so we've got that energy drinks alcohol soda pop now food so i start doing that for a little bit and it's working it's working i i'm at least going to the supermarket to buy some stuff some of it might be shit some of it might not be shit. But, but you're I'm buying it and you're cooking it, preparing but I'm it. Buying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing that. And then I think it was so April of last year is when I started to uh do uh my show afternoon tea with Az on a weekly basis. I'd sort of periodically done it, but now I was gonna do bang. Sunday uh, afternoon tea with Az Sunday, it's gonna be a boom. And I'm gonna use that as an accountability show for me. So I'm going to use that as just a way for, for myself to connect directly with my audience. Just no one else in the stream. Love doing streams with other people. But this is just that time of the week. Just you and me chat. You and me talking. Uh, me responding to the chat. Whatever it may be. But also, more importantly for me, being accountable. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Get it out there. Talk, talk, to, talk to the chat. This is, what I'm, this is what I'm trying to do. You've seen me post these up on social media. This is what I'm trying to do. This is my mindset. Uh, this is what I want to, to achieve. So uh, I, I start doing that show, and I think it was uh, June. So just a couple of months after that, I, I, I sort of pluck up the courage to hit the gym for the, for the first time in God knows how long, three, four years, three years, at least three years, three and a half years. So I, I, do, I go to this gym, and I, uh, I find this gym that I quite like. It's a good gym, served me well. And uh, I do a sesh, and it's not a great sesh, but it's a sesh. 
and I do I do little bits and bobs, little bits of exercise, and I come out and I re record a little uh, snippet uh, on some on June a June Sunday evening, saying uh, if a fat fuck like me can get this out to the gym, so can you. And that was it, and I posted up on on social media. I then found that I was going to the gym regularly. I started going to the gym regularly and I was getting an endorphin release, a natural endorphin release from going and doing physical exercise. And it was tough, really tough at first because my body just wasn't, I was huge, absolutely ginormous. My body just wasn't capable. So I'm just doing it step by step by step by step. And a lot of the initial gym visits weren't weights, weren't anything like that. It was just getting on getting on a treadmill and walking, just trying to get that going, just trying to get that, that, uh, that walking going, walking going. So for about the first two months, it was that. Then I started to, to bring in a, a little bit more. And since I'm combining the exercise with the diet, with the no this, no that, no the other, uh, and I'm weighing myself every week, I actually found the courage to get on the bloody scales in, in April. That was one of the things that I wanted to do so i would tell the chat every week uh what reduction we'd had or gain we'd had thankfully it was the vast majority of the time reduction and and that became my new addiction mm -hmm. uh that my new addiction became seeing those numbers go down um and it and it's, it's it was a it was a positive addiction it was it was a it was positive because it was born off Natural endorphins, exercise, better diet, much better diet, uh, vast reduction in calories, cutting out crap. And uh, here we are, we're, uh, you know, middle of March. So in about a month's time, it's going to be a year since I started that process. And since I started from April of last year to now, uh, I've lost approximately, um, I think it's around 110 pounds in weight. Wow. Congratulations, um, dude. Yeah. Like, I, I still got plenty of plenty yeah. to go. I got, you know, it's, it's a, two, I call it my two year journey for a reason. Cause I, I believe that I do need it, you know, at least two years to get where I want, where I want to be. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been such a, such a positive change and physically the difference between now and this time last year, it's, it's just not even comparable. Like, yeah, like, like yesterday, I did a couple of streams. I did afternoon tea with Az, and I did um, Sunday fun day. Four hours of Sunday fun day, two and a half hours of afternoon tea. Uh, I had just done two heavy sessions at the gym, so I was aching, wasn't going to go to the gym yesterday. But when I'd finished my, uh, my Sunday fun day, A, I went out just for a little walk, just to stretch the legs, because my body was just like... <laughs> Come on, I know we're not at the gym today, but let's do something. And then when I got back, I moved my bedroom around because I didn't like the way that the the the, uh, the shelving was uh, versus the side table, and I wanted to shift it all around uh, to make it feel as if it was more open space and a little. So so I, so it's like doing that till five, five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> uh, which is a was, lot of, and your body wants to do it. Yeah, my body like, wants to do it. It's capable of doing it. Wants to do it. And uh, since we've been talking on the show, my mates just text me, and he's been like, "Hey, do you want to hit the uh, gym tonight?" So uh, even though I'm aching a bit still, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hit the gym. Yeah, tonight. yeah, we're gonna hit the gym tonight. So uh, yeah, after this, I'm gonna hit the gym. Well, I think I think it's very impressive. I think I reached out to you at some point in the past year, year and a half, whenever you first started cutting things out, and I was like. You're inspiring me. Mm. I know you're inspiring others. So it's it's cool because your your method of keeping accountability by being public with it, I completely understand. That's why, you know, AA, you got accountability partner, basically. You got a sponsor. But but your method of doing that, of keeping accountability, is actually it's it's feeding people as well. It's like helping people and inspiring people. And I was gonna ask you. As you cut things out, did you replace it with anything? And you kind of answered that with the gym. Because I think addiction sometimes, if you're addicted to something, sugar, whatever it is, it it almost seems like it might need to be funneled into some positive. Yeah, transferred over somewhere thing. else. Yeah. Yeah. Did you replace it with anything else? Like when I quit drinking alcohol, I was like, oh, I'm going to drink sparkling water instead. Or, you know, find something that I could grab. 
do you have any tips or things for people who might be trying to cut things out? Um, I, I'm British, so I love tea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, of uh, course. I, I, and I know that uh, soda, fizzy pop, as we call it here in the UK, fizzy pop, uh, is is absolutely my my um, nemesis, absolute nemesis. So I, I I thought if I replaced it with uh, sparkling water or something, mm -hmm. no, because the carbonation expands the stomach, and when your stomach expands, it needs more food. It wants more food to fill. Uh, so I didn't want to have any sort of carbonation in me because of I didn't I wanted my stomach to shrink, not expand. Right. Um, so uh, I just literally turned myself on to. Um, still water, coffee, tea. Now, uh, now I can, I, I, I will, uh, you know, maybe have some BCAAs before I go to the gym, uh, put that in the water, shake up some BCAAs, amino acids, uh, to, uh, to get, to get that, uh, going, um, or, uh, a, a sugar free, like tinted water every now and again, like a, strawberry you know like mm. a strawberry water but with a hint with of a little strawberry. flavor yeah yeah but it's but it's sugar free you get the sugar free don't get the one that should get the sugar free version maybe want something like that once in a while but i do find that i i work fine just with coffee tea and water um at the moment uh yeah no 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 real need to to add any more but yeah replacing the negatives with with positive stuff which is being more physical the gym um just being more active in general uh and and i i'm lucky enough that i do have good friends you know the friend my real life friends that i've been friends with them for decades you know they're not like a couple of years or so or youtube people have latched onto me because i do youtube or anything no 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 these are these are friends i've had for 20 plus years um so so i'm just i'm just the same person 20 uh, now that i was 20 years ago they don't treat me any differently nor should they treat me any differently um but obviously when you get slightly into the the public zeitgeist you can see certain changes on certain people but no no to them i'm just who i am you know uh and and so it's great to have that that grounded those you know that grounding in 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 my life because you know you go online and you're working online all the time yeah you you can uh potentially slip into a trap that this is this is the reality it's not it's not it's, it's not, not the reality at all it's it's your friends it's your family so I, I do make sure to keep uh, good close contact with uh, them and, and do stuff with my friends and, you know, go out, we go out to the cinema, we go out to the gym, we go out for something to eat, you know, we'll grab a Nando's, some chicken, chicken and broccoli for me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do, we'll do, we, we do all these kind of things, you know, uh, and it's, it's so important to, to make sure. So yeah, you, people see a, a presence, a, a healthy presence of me online but I have a very healthy uh, social life uh, outside of uh, YouTube. And that, that's so important to have that, particularly if they want to go to the gym with you. Yeah, I like I like having the buddy. Uh, I've recently restarted working out. I mentioned it. Any regulars in my chat, you know, the getting back to the gym and doing just classes even. It doesn't matter. Like you said, just getting on the treadmill. When you first get back into it, your body's like, what? Like, oh, yeah, I've done this forever. And but you get through that period, which I'm hoping to get through soon. I've been going to these. Uh, uh, it's not easy, you know. It, yeah. None of the, none of this is easy. And if it, it, I've had people contact me, uh, how how are you doing it? How you do? I've got a cameo to do, where a gentleman has 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 asked uh, for a bit of a chat about it, and I've had that. I've had emails. Uh, I've had you know all sorts from from people. Um, saying I, I, I want to make changes myself, and uh, how 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 do you stick with it? How do you do it? What's what's the secret? Um, the, the secret is it's it's hard work, and it and it is hard work. If it was easy work, all of us would look like Adonis's. I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's about how much to me. It's about how much you want it, how much you want to enact a change. Um, and I think uh, something that I I told myself is 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 uh just be kind to yourself forgive you you know whatever whatever it is hang up you've had just just be kind to yourself because no no one else will <laughs> and so everybody's you, got something fair. it's just some that you can see more easily you know but everybody's got something they struggle with it's like sure. um 
a lot of people they they have if they have one that they can keep a secret or you don't see on the outside maybe or um but i mean i've had people contact me when talking about getting sober i've had people contact me about porn addiction or you know things that maybe other people wouldn't know that they can keep but my point is everybody's dealt with some kind of thing that they've struggled and tried to maybe they haven't tried to yet but that they should try to war with mm -hmm. <laughs> and get under control rather than having it control them uh i'm going to wrap this up i just wanted to answer a couple of these that are left johnny skinwalker says it must be hard going out with friends and not drinking beer uh i don't personally go to bars or stuff I, I don't I don't do that. When my friends go out for a night out, I don't join them for those nights out. Um if they're going out on the on the lash, as we say here in the UK. Um no, I d I don't I don't I was do gonna that. say, yeah, as you know what? It's not as hard as you might think. Um I speak as someone who I mean, I was an alcoholic, so my husband and I quit drinking about five years ago. I don't I don't go out if the intent is to get drunk, like that's what the event is, is a getting drunk event. I'll go to an event like a music show or something that's got alcohol. I mean, I have sure. to. My husband's a musician. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm around alcohol all the time. One of my jobs is working with alcohol. And but if it's an event like a social event where the the only purpose is drinking, <laughs> that's where I don't go. Because it's kind of like, what else am I going? That's what they're there to do. You know, like you said, a bar. But I'm it's too old for that shit anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that hard though. Like you said, go to the cinema. Go to there's so many kinds of events you can go to where hmm. when you're when you're in the world of drinking or at least when i was i always thought this movie is great it'd be better with alcohol you know or like this beach is great it'd be better without yeah. it. no it's actually no uh i remember things now like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like hmm. there's some positives of not doing it uh okay Rudiger for two pounds. Thank you, says Adore Your Hat, Carrie. A great show today. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. I got some uh, hat haters lately, so I appreciate I like the nice hat. goods. Thank you. I love hats. I don't some people really don't like them. Uh they'll let you know. Justin Martins for five dollars says, as is looking spelt. Long way to go. Long way to go. Journey's still going. Only uh less than halfway there, technically. So Weehee. Living on a prayer and all that. <sighs> Legalize adulthood. Thank you, kind <laughs> sir. You didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it. Ten dollars, Carrie. So sorry, I got your name wrong. Hey, wait. It's wait a minute. Hey, wait. I wait mean... a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Thank you very much. Thank you. I is it Carrie? No, miss it. Carrie, not that way either. Two dollars. Oh, screw it. <laughs> Just gonna call you Bob. I appreciate it. It's okay. <laughs> Is that I? I really appreciate it. Force of Lights here. Hello, ladies. Good to see you. And then um, for anybody who uh, may be new to Az or learning about video games, Gamergate, all that stuff, this is a link to Az's channel. You can find it below. Also in the description, it's linked. Thank you to Sisters and Sim Yarn for throwing that up there. Az. I appreciate your time, your wisdom, your sense of humor. Pleasure. Your advice for people. And what do you have? What do you have coming up? Or what would you like to leave us with? Some final thoughts. Um, well, tomorrow we've got the real BBC on my channel, uh, which is going to start at 5 p.m. UK time because of daylight saving. And we've got the uh, Sosk sisters on, who are the writers of the uh, Yara book. And the Ripperverse, which has just come out a week ago today, and it's already on one point two million dollars. Amazing, which is uh, it's all right, isn't it? It's doing yeah. okay. Um, so and then Ripping the Silverback is going to be on Eric's channel this week for my Ripping the Silverback people. Eric July's channel, Young Ripper fifty nine. Uh, but uh, yeah, if if, if to leave with something, uh, you know, be fair to yourself. Uh, there's no it, there's no hole. You're not. You're never too deep in the hole. My, I, I always used to use that as an excuse. I'm too. I'm too far gone now. It's no point. No point mm -hmm. trying. I'm too far gone. Might as well just go to oblivion. No, you, you're never. You're never too far deep into the hole. Um, you just got to give yourself a chance. And uh, 
if you are struggling and if you if you are um you know uh wanting to 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 kind of tell me what's going on with you and whatnot you can always hit me up on email uh heel versus babyface at gmail.com if you if you're uh you're needing a poke or you're needing a uh something to kind of prompt you to to make a change if you're wanting to make a change um because you can do it you can do it it is going to take hard work and you are going to have to to bring discipline in but you're never too far gone i love so, uh, yeah. i love that message i know that feeling exactly where you think you're too far gone and you're right it's a lie don't listen to it mm. and it's such a nice message i didn't make a joke when you said if you need a poke hit me up <laughs> i said what i said <laughs> thank you ass <laughs> <laughs> okay folks go and visit Az's channel uh please thank him in the chat for being here with us today really appreciate it dude have a great rest of your evening have a great night at the gym yeah uh shoulders cool shoulders day take care guys <laughs> bye <laughs>